Hello, Internet, the world. This is the Scorn and Vamp podcast on Goblin Slayer Episode 5 and a summary of a little discussion of the pre- previous episodes. Um, Scorn, uh, introduce yourself. Uh, what are you about, my I am, dude? I am the Scorn. I am here because I don't like anime. And this is the only anime I've watched in like five months. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why I even get out of bed. Uh, I am Vamp, okay. as uh, everyone could guess. I'll, I'll I am. T- tell two of the viewers. Hey. E. Okay, so this podcast was my idea because I don't know. For some reason, I care about this podcast more than anything this entire year. So the controversies were brought this anime to our attention. Uh, other than that, I probably would have dropped it right away. I definitely wouldn't have watched it if not for the controversy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this podcast actually, like, I, I did drop it anyways half because of the controversy and how I just wanted to ignore it. But I did pick it up for this podcast, and I I, I do have to say that I'm a lot more pleasantly surprised than I, I thought I would would have been. Ooh, um, that's interesting, because I'm, I'm uh, less into it now than when I first, after the first few episodes. Oh yeah, I, I should contextualize this with saying that I dropped it and I gave it a two. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I gave it, like, a... Sh- extraordinarily bad score it takes a lot to get to a two for me like i probably have less than 10 twos uh ever in anime so like it's pretty like hardcore um yeah i I definitely i think you can say it definitely deserves that i I, tattoo it's not very good i watched it for some certain stuff that i had and as it as it goes on there's less of that stuff Um, we should probably explain what goblin said is for those who don't know Yes, I think we should mention the premise. How would you describe the premise of this show? Um, a 15-year-old's first idea for a subversive anime. Like, you have, like, the basic bitch monster being the actual serious threat, and you have the one guy whose entire thing is based around that, and he has, like, an edgy backstory. Oh, yeah. It's a super uh, edgy show. I, um, which, which I, I, at least for me, is a, a inherently bad thing. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, what I like about the idea of it being branded as goblin, as focus on the goblin slayer, like, goblin slaying, and this is just his weird op- autistic obsession and he is autistic he's really bad at communicating uh and he like literally only contextualizes anything through goblin killing Um, like that is his whole idea and i think that's really cool honestly that's what that's why i wanted it to be but i don't think he's going for that i think he's just going for that he saw damage in his past that he's like broken and that he like be fixed basically oh yeah i I think yeah uh, to explain goblin slayer better it's an anime about um in a generic Japanese fantasy world, where um, where like things happen, and this one guy is obsessed with killing goblins because of things that happened to him in his past. It's it, the first episode starts off not with him, with a random adventuring party that uh, decides that all of them are newbies and have just started and have decided to um, kill some goblins. Yeah, they go into a and, cave uh, with goblins and they get issues. fucked, and it's really Literally. hilarious. It's the funniest thing I've watched. Yeah, watch it at um one point five speed. Honestly, that's optimal. Two two times speed is pretty good, but like, it, it's it's pretty funny at one point five too. If you're like experienced at watching things faster, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Like it's the dialogue really is not important in the show, which will help a lot. Like, yeah, it's it's much more. This it's a lot more engaging being at that faster like watch speed. Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um part of the reason I wanted to do this is because like eventually it started to remind me a lot of like Berserk because it is very similar to Berserk, just bad. When Berserk is amazing, <laughs> so like one of the things about people who usually say about you shouldn't do um this sort of thing about negative, you shouldn't be this negative. But I'm like this negativity has like made me appreciate Goblin Slayer. I mean, <laughs> made me appreciate Berserk so much more. Like I. Yesterday, I sat, I sat down for like an hour listening to music and just realized how much I love Berserk. Like, while thinking about this. Because they're both about, inherently about kind of the same thing. You have this character who's traumatized in his past. In the case of Guts, his past is the trauma. And they're like completely broken by it. And it's about them, uh, finding people and like being, uh, fixed or like knowing in Berserk. I feel like in Goblin Slayer, fixed is a bad word for like Berserk is more like, um, he like develops, he, he, he starts like, uh, caring about people and things. And yeah, and which, uh, which is where I don't like where it's going. <laughs> and so I agree uh, with you. Yeah. Uh, I know, um, Arts does, um, like that part of Berserk. I'm kind of, uh, sad he's not here because 
I want you to like uh, talk to him about that. See if he gets any more. But I forgot about it while he was here. But yes, that's uh, so like I think that's very. I think they're very similar in that kind of style. And and I had to figure out why does Berserk work and why does this not? And part of it is like like I said about you saying he has autism. I think he's just traumatized. I feel like Guts is actually autistic. I like so he's like learning to like live with that as a already existing uh, mm, problem and, um, and ap- applied upon his like trauma. So like it's is is overcoming both of those things, and in a way that feels um, realistic and uh, understandable to someone like me who has autism. Yeah. I need to watch say, Berserk. Definitely... Yeah, you do. Um, yeah, you... The movies are alright, but I'd definitely recommend uh, the old anime. Yeah, I've tried to get into it, and it's like, oh, those first scenes is so slow. Guts walking into a bar, I'm like, hmm, really boring. Hmm. I think I was benefited from watching it. this was like one of the first anime I watched, so I was like, oh, this is awesome. It just is so cool. That's pretty cool. Because I, I, I did, cause like a lot of the things I thought about was like in relation to Berserk, it's like, okay, so I don't like the first episode of Goblin Slayer that much, because I'm... Um, but I'm also trying to think of what did why did I like Guts so much more at the beginning than I did compared to like the Goblins there. I like and I, I I didn't really get much of an answer. The answer I got was Guts was just uh I felt like Guts was embracing the edginess a lot more in the first episode of the old anime, which is the only thing only bizarre property I've seen, uh, and the movies and the new anime, but not the manga. Yeah, from what so I can tell was, from Berserk, it's like uh, I was about to say Ike, but uh, Guts. <laughs> Um, Ike. <laughs> Ike is the uh, the Guts fanboy, um, c- not canonically, just in my imagination. Um, very similar character from Fire Emblem, uh, at least in visual style. I forgot what I was going to say. Um, who cares? Um, I want to say that real quickly, like before I forget. And like, part of me really wants to like the show, at least in the aspect of. Um, or at least I should say, past me would have liked the show, possibly. Because past me, like, really liked to, like, optistically obsess over, like, an idea. Um, so, like, in, in Goblin Slayer, it would have been this this one guy, just, he's really concentrated on goblins, and that's his one sole thing. Imagine look, looking at these subhumans, and I'm, fr- uh, by the way, I've always kind of, like, hated things that aren't human, because humans are superior. Um, I've and I so feel like the Ooh, um, interesting. I feel the opposite about the human thing I think I used to uh, like uh, aliens and stuff from different races because it was like why do you want to be human I'm human now human is shit I want to be something better but now I've come into I've come into the human supremacy so, yeah uh, you know, I do have to say in the show upon seeing like you know that there's some characters that just you know races that live longer and are basically humans like the elves they're the actual superior race here is all I'm saying the one F pack that we've seen is clearly subhuman. And I will not have you say anything different. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think I, I definitely, I've said this before on Into the Server, uh, that like I would definitely have made this anime if I was 15. If like if I was 15 and you said make an anime, I was like, this is what it is. The Goblin Slayer, everything about him works that way. Like it's, it's, that, it's, like, it's that very basic subversion where like, oh, you have goblins, they're just the first level enemy. And I was like, oh no, they're actually super dangerous. They'd be like, Oh, oh, careful. And you yeah. have this one character who just specializes artistically against that. It's it's almost like um, another show that's airing this season called uh, That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. Like, the whole subversion and gimmick is like, oh, um, I mean, well, first of all, the guy gets... This isn't a subversion, but the, just the little premise of the show is, oh, the, some guy dies in the real world uh, and then becomes a slime. But the slime just so happens to have, like, uh, like crazy ass powers to like absorb other people, other creatures' powers, and eat them um, and stuff. And he just gets like basically to be a god, and that's a subversion. Yeah. A slime, aka the weakest thing in most RPGs, becomes like uh, a you, god. Have you watched them Konosuba episode uh, season two? Because that's um, literally the joke that like oof. this slime is like the most dangerous general of the Demon King. Well, yeah, another thing about Konosuba is like the fucking girls tits in episode two. Konosuba as a joke has does the fucking fluffy tits and they say like no take me seriously and does it and I'm like I can't be asked. So yeah. Konosuba ruins I- Isekai because it's like it makes fun of everything and they just do it seriously and it's like why mm-hmm. Konosuba killed you you should be dead. Yeah get out of here you got fucked. So, yeah um but about uh, the slime so I just want to say that's the anime I would make now right now I'm very like obsessed with the idea of like a slime like monster thing. 
I'm right. more interested in the kind of a, have you ever played or seen prototype? Um, yeah, I've played the first prototype. Oh yeah, basically like that. That's my kind of uh, idea of it. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like super edgy, uh, you kill people and fuck with them. You know, you like turn into that father and pretend to be him for no reason. <laughs> I mean, just to, you know, just so edgy. Yeah, as a, yeah. Like I'm definitely that. Oh, uh, just looking at the main character, I just see, see this the the edge spewing out. Yeah, he, Alex Mercer is it? Yeah. The best part in oh, the second name, game, dude. he likes this. The best part in the second game, he spends like six months deciding on whether or not humanity should live, and decides no, they shouldn't. <laughs> Hell he yeah! Comes, he's like, I'm just, I'm just gonna kill all of them. Unfortunately, just gotta do this. this yeah, it's the only guy option. Unfortunately, you play as the bad guy in Prototype 2. So you play as the other guy, not the one trying to wipe out humanity. Oh, damn it. So, this, so yeah, Prototype, uh, what, what do you rate compared to um, uh, Goblin Slayer? So, pro- Prototype, honestly, gameplay-wise, is like a 7. Feels pretty good for your Xbox game. Uh, visually, 6 out of 10. I'd probably give it 6 out of 5. So it's instantly already better than Goblin Slayer, honestly. Yeah, I... I do actually love Prototype for some reason. Like, I re- I'm really obsessed with the kind of, like, a biomass-type powers it has. I feel like it could have done so much more than what it did do. You know, it was very generic. It's like, even though I loved every power, it was still like, I have big fish now. I punch people. I have claws. I cut people up. I have a sword and armor, which is the most badass thing ever. Oh, yeah. But, but it's still just like, a uh, sword and armor. I fucking love that scene where they're, like, dogpiling when he, like, breaks down. He's like, I'm back. <laughs> Oh my god, yes. Too good. Okay, yeah. I love the, I the the feel of the jumping in that game and like the scaling the buildings and stuff. Because I remember yeah. like being able to do somewhat of that kind of stuff and like it just feels so nice to be able to go wherever you want mostly. Yeah. The second game kind of uh, ruined the jumping a bit. I can't remember how, but it changed the controls so it didn't feel as good. It was still good, I still liked it, but you know, the movement was a lot worse, which I, I think we talked about before. We kind of like movement in video games. Yeah, we're those kind of people. Yeah. Because you're doing movement a lot. If you can make that fun, you can make a lot of the traversal fun. Yeah, I can play a game that, like, I otherwise, story-wise, would just not care about. And just, like, so- like Sonic games, uh, I'll, I'll mention uh, a, a fan-made game called Sonic World. Uh, that's pretty cool for its movement. They nailed down a lot of good mu- movement. Uh, but some of the animations, kind of uncool. And it's just a big collection of... Uh, Sonic maps from all across the series it's just, just like basically just to let you do as much movement as possible in as many different contexts as possible and so yeah. that's the appeal of it it's all just movement yeah that's it, definitely the Sonic appeal the problem I usually have is that like, you get barely any control oh, yeah. it's because I'm not very good at them so it's literally just hold forward and see how far you can get yeah. which is a yeah even with Sonic so, World it's like I still have to go out of my way to like try like weird shit um yeah and like I not just go but the visuals in sonic world instantly like top a lot of the other sonic games instantly uh honestly just with like it has extra yeah. like modern like effects and stuff um they actually yeah. it's like very professionally done honestly uh other than like you know some of the characters poses and stuff are just like left to be too plain um i feel like just just because they're just guy, we don't want to go too hard and make something and go into a territory where we're gonna make something try to look cool, but then it's gonna come out bad. Um, the Discord um, of the server is interesting. Yeah, this the style of like the Sonic games are a lot easier to like um replicate compared to something more complicated. You know, like oh, yeah. the, that's the benefit of like Sonic and Pokemon games. They're a lot easier to like copy. Yeah, I saw like animal things. I got, yeah, I watched them. Um, a uh, playthrough of like a span game and I understand why they're nowhere near as good as like actual Pokemon games because like the sprites are like infinitely worse and like the design is horrible usually like mm. act- as in the game design and the actual um, monster designs I saw one that was like 12 trainers on like the first route and it's like this is the first route this is supposed to be easy uh, yeah. it, was, it was hard it was just you had to keep going back to the Pokemon scepter sent to every battle because you had like five left half left oh god it's, like, it's just so also fun. bad balancing why would you why yeah, would you do that to the game I don't, feel I, the I don't understand yeah it's like you played pokemon you should know this you know it's like you like, don't do this until like i'm gonna be honest Go like that like honestly blows my mind the more that i think about it because how would i would have thought about actually approaching like 
making a fan made games of like multiple different things of Pokemon. I've thought about a little bit. Um, obviously, I don't I'm not an artist, so that I can, I basically can't do anything. Um, but like, I would instantly like look at another Pokemon game and instantly be like, okay, is there a formula formula here, and how do I replicate that in a similar way while not being the exact same? Because I I honestly think every artist. Like, it's great to have quote-unquote original ideas, try to be original, but really all you have to be doing is just looking at other people's stuff and taking aspects from that. One of the reasons Undertale is really good, or at least a lot of people like it and think it's so cool and stuff, because it took all the best aspects from other things and, you know, put it together in a fairly good way. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of Undertale, or at least as a really good game. I think it's, like, pretty decent, and that's it. Um, Stealing from one game is a rip off. Stealing from multiple things is inspiration. Oh, yeah. To get more back on track. So about traversal in video games, I don't think you've uh, played it all, but like Warframe had a very interesting time of it. Because originally, the way the game worked is that like, it was because of a bug in the game, you would move around by using your weapons. Like, you could like, you would fly around. So that led to like, certain weapons becoming like, masters of the like, game. Not because they were mm-hmm. good, but because you could like, travel faster. That was so a that's... very interesting time. Did they, like, update the game into the way to utilize that, or they just abandoned it? No. Uh, Uh, Some stuff happened. It was, uh, they didn't abandon it, but they, like, got rid of it and replaced it with something also pretty fun. But Mm. it was an interesting time because it was, like, I felt like they did know because they released a weapon that was, like, 90% of its utility was that it went further than, like, 50% of all the weapons. So Mm. it was, like, so it felt like they knew about it, but eventually decided that they wanted just a better power core system. So you didn't need to do this because a lot of the puzzle in the game could be broken by it. Cause it'd be like mm. park across this wall and you just like attack up it and it would be easy. They changed yeah. it now to a bullet jump system, which is a lot. It's probably, uh, I, I missed the world system, but this system's good, good as well. Yeah. It has a, this system I, has a lot of cool stuff. I, I played got, like, a little a bit of the thing. new, the newer version like a year ago or so. And I do have to say that like, Running around with, like, a pole and stuff, really anything. It's just, like, the basic movement of just flying in one direction and, like, like sliding on the ground and stuff. I just remember there being a whole lot of movement and it being pretty decent. I want to say yeah. pretty decent. That's a that's a compliment, honestly, in this, this one circumstance. Yeah. When, um, uh, another interesting thing they did was, um, sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm blanking on saying. Oh, I got really good at the system at one point where, like, on your like uh main sip, there's like a there's two floors, and mm-hmm. the basically the slide between one to the other one, I could infinitely just keep like sliding down, flip back up, continue the momentum from the original slide back to the open. I did that for like literally like ten minutes once. Oh, I was so was proud of myself. Yeah, both them has like a very good uh, like momentum and stuff because like a lot of that game is like running around and shit because like eventually you realize that it's like more productive to just constantly move. Just from the sense of like a uh, getting past everything quickly, yeah, very very cathartic as well. Uh, very yeah. satisfying. Um, uh, I'm pretty some sure of the designs never... in uh, uh, in in Warframe remind me of Goblin Slayer. Which ones? Bit. Um, I just remember Providing like me. some of the basic ones. There was some lightning dude that was kind of blue, and is like I just remember his head kind of being similar to the Goblin Slayer dude, kind of. Kind of. Like, I really like the style of Goblin Slayer's helmet, but I don't like the look of it. Because, yeah. like, uh, I like the idea of, like, the parts of the bit, the, like, eyes and mouth being kind of uh, covered a lot. But the way it's done is, like, a uh, too rounded for me. Yeah. I, the thing about Warframe is you don't get to see much of the customization. Because, like, you know, it's all, like, locked behind stuff. So. Like, yeah. uh, the premium currency. I actually have a bunch. I don't have a bunch of it, but I have a bunch of cosmetics. Because eventually, Warframe is the one game I go into actually trading it. Mm. So, like, I actually got decent stuff. I'm really depressed now because, like, I have no one to play with and I, I don't have any motivation to play it other than, you know, with friends. Interesting. Oh, um, I woke up tonight, I said, ah. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Goblin Slayer podcast where we don't me. talk about Goblin Slayer. I gotta the last... somebody love me. And I know, now I know. Oh, so we spent the last, like, half an hour talking you know. about video games. You have a good luck, lucky, lucky, there. lucky, lucky, well, do you? <laughs> okay. Hello. <clears throat> that Hello. was the first part of the Paradise Games opening. <laughs> well, oh, so we spent the last, like, half hour talking about video games. We haven't talked about Goblins there in, like, that entire time. Oh. It's amazing. 
It's all, I'm so happy. It's all recorded. It's all recorded. Yes, you know? it's good. It's good. Oh, yeah. um, but I want to ask you, uh, let's actually get back in fact. So, Arts, uh, I was going to ask you about, you don't like the way uh, Berserk's going. I was talking to uh, my friend, Mr. Vamp the Vampire here about um, what I like about Guts is that like he's like a, a character. I feel like he's, I, I said that I think he's autistic and that he's also has trauma in his life. That he's like the show, the you know the stories about him getting over it, not you know like go, going through and learning to live with it, like learning to trust and uh, understand people. But I feel like Goblin Slayer is literally just a character who's traumatized and will be fixed. While I think Guts will always be like affected by his past, and will always have that as like a feature of him. But you uh, you said you don't like the way uh, you know Berserk's going. Can you explain, please? Um, how much of Berserk have you read? Uh, I've one. read none. Just the anime. Way. Just the anime uh, okay. and the first season of the new one. Okay. So after the, um, after the eclipse happens, uh, I know what happens after the eclipse. Uh, yeah, I know what happened after that day, though. Um, well, basically, it has another big arc, which is with uh, some, so, uh, so, some priest and. Um, they turn into demons and they fight the priest. It's basically Vampire Hunter D, if you've seen that movie. Yeah, that was um, the first season of the new anime. Yeah, yes. It was not very good. No, no, it, it wasn't. It was worse than Goblin Slayer, by far. Um, like, I, I don't... The manga, it was okay. But uh, Gut, the, the, the Guts gets some like new 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 friend characters after that. And... Um, the ba- like it's basically just a, a an adventuring party, the adventuring party, and and then it turns into oh, like the the whole the whole thing with Griffith is turned down basically, to focus on guts and guts' adventuring party, and yeah, I, I, I I don't like the characters are pretty well written, but I don't like that is not a direction I would want the story of Berserk to go. The story of Berserk is the story of Guts, his personal like trauma and autism and psychosis, and then as well as the psychosis and, and fucking experience of Griffith. And that's not that's not like the main focus anymore. Oh. It's kind of shifted away from that. All right, yeah, I, I fully understand that now. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think I think what I like about it is like he has like Guts goes through the trauma once in his life, and then he like he gets back up but then he gets knocked down again yeah and he gets back up again and you're not gonna keep him down oh hell yeah yeah but no that's what i like i like that i like that it did the thing of showing him get you know get taken back i like that i like shows that do that kind of thing where isn't just you've gone through this arc now you're fixed forever i like shows that like no it's a constant battle you you can like he's like come back but then he's been like betrayed even worse than before and he's even lower than he was and He's like he's been able to heal again, but I definitely understand why you wouldn't like that. I hope in the newer like uh ones like Berserk and like I mean uh Guts and Guts and Guts them more time to each other, but I don't think that's gonna happen because like uh they're like well, golden age of fucking it, it makes a shit ton of money. They have to pad it out. Yeah, they they have to fuck. It just has to happen in in universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell! Yeah. But like. The Golden Age arc is like incredibly just unique in anime, I think. Yes. Uh, and like, well, and it get, yes. How much is like a debate, but like, uh, I think yeah, it just seemed to get a lot more generic adventure focused, I think, afterwards. Like, I, yeah, still, I would like it. I, I need to read it at some point. It's still beautiful, but it's not, yeah. like, uh, it's not, it's not what I want out of my berserk, basically. That, that's completely fair. I understand that. But um, anyways, to get back to uh, Goblin Slayer, um, we just went over like the premise, I guess. Uh, <laughs> then we spent half an hour talking about video games. Yeah, the first episode. Video games. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows the controversial episode. It was just the you know we described it basically. You know they go yes, episode newbies three. go in there and no get wrecked. No goblin wrecked. slaying in it. Literally, two goblins get killed and it's not even by Goblin Slayer. And Oof. it's in the last minute. These fucking uh, idiots. What do you think we're here for? For actual character development and the fucking. In when are we getting? Well, when are we getting? This is the podcast. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> You're in the podcast now. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna. Uh, apparently, I'm editing this. You so guys like, were talking I, about how you, you how, how you didn't really start and everything got topic or something. So I thought. Yes, but so. that's the funny bit. 
That's yeah. the part I'm definitely keeping in. <laughs> so yeah, episode three. So, uh, uh, I forget what happens in there, uh, but uh, is that where we uh, meet okay. Elf Girl, or is that the next mm. episode? Uh, Elf Girl is uh, episode three. Yeah, I think we might see her at the end of episode two, but we don't really get to see her much. We should probably explain what happens actually. I I did a meme about episode three and like derailed us. Yeah, uh, I forgot what happened episode- too. Uh, <laughs> episode episode two is probably my favorite but also the most forgettable so i should probably actually explain what i like about the show what yeah. the goblin the way goblin slayer kills goblins and the way like he's very resourceful like he uses their weapons because i i apparently the reason is because he's afraid that like if he gets magic ones the goblins will like get kill him and use them but i find that really shit i much prefer that he's just incredibly poor because killing goblins doesn't pay so they don't like pay him much for it yeah so like I much prefer that he's literally desperate more than he's actually, like, an act- active choice. Like, it's okay. an interesting thing. Because he yeah. seems to be, like, very minimalist. Because it's, like, he seems to be able to, like, pay everything just fine. And he's just, like, hyper-focused on doing his thing. And even with his communication with other people, he doesn't try to communicate with other people. But mostly because he's, like, you know, and he, even though he's kind of autistic, uh, he, at least with, like, his communication... Uh, like, he doesn't create problems for himself. He never really makes any enemies. People just kind of talk shit about him a little bit behind his back and speculate because he's so mysterious. The only characters that dislike him are characters we're meant to dislike. Yeah. With Guts, there's, like, it's kind of the same because, like, you have a, like, Costco who's being a bitch at the beginning and some of the other characters who, like, attack Guts for no reason, like, to bander him and, like, the rest of the characters also like him. But I always got to feel that, like, the ones who liked him really just were good people and, uh, you know, Koska, like, uh, has her reasons. She, like, explains her reasons, and she's like, yeah, that makes sense. The other guy is just a dick. I forgot his name. <laughs> you know, he has the best death in the Eclipse, where, like, the woman with the tits, like, eats him. Yeah, that happens. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. The Eclipse is... I, I know I just spoiled that for you, but, like, fuck it, you, you should know. These things. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't read yeah. Berserk by this point, uh, you know, like, fuck, man. I mean, I haven't yeah. yet. And I'm fine with that. I'm... As you know, I have no problems with spoilers at all. Um, so is the first episode of Goblin Slayer. Surprisingly, who knew? Goblin Slayer appears only for the second half. The first half is just a random group who, as we already made this joke, gets fucked literally. And Goblin Slayer saves. I really dislike the fucking guy with the giant sword because it's like I've told you before about how basic me- meta subversion this is. Like, with the goblins being the main and en- like, a dangerous enemy, ooh. And I was like, oh, this guy's using a too big sword in an impractical situation. Why the fuck is he using it then? Yeah, he's this using a, a, a mid-length sword or long, you know, thin sword in a, like, small cave. And so how he dies is literally, he, he swings from uh, head above to down, and he hits the top of the cave, and he gets... He fucks up and like he just gets surrounded and bitten and fucking killed. That was actually I like the goblins fucking going for him all at once, but I prefer I don't see why he needed to even hit the like roof to do that. They could have just had one come behind him, like they did it with the mage where like a a goblin like snuck under her and like stabbed the leg and then like the rest jumped on her. Yeah, he was he was already kind of uh, surrounded based upon, like, yeah. the framing of it, which was kind of interesting. He, he was yeah. already kind of fucked anyways, <laughs> because he's already yeah. surrounded. <laughs> like I said, I hate the, fucking basic, the basic bits of, uh, you know, subversion, because he's like, oh, he uses a too big sword, like, why the fuck is he using He's not in our world. He's not a guy from our world into their world. He has yeah, a that's, um, that's we have. pretty weird. Like, like, one of the weird things about swords, if you're, like, a nerd like me, you know, like, backscabbits actually don't work. Like, you physically cannot get a sword from that unless you do very impractical like if you notice in like live action tv they never show somebody pulling a sword out of the back they show them stop when it out but they never show them doing the whole motion because it's actually almost impossible and so like, it's like yeah. these are the kind of shit, shit that in this world would be knowledge it would be like of course you could don't do it like this of course you don't go into a cave with a giant sword and it's like so this was literally just for us just so like we the random people the, uh, who you know, not in universe. It's not in universe, and it annoys me because like it doesn't make sense. And I, I don't. Oh I yeah. Don't, uh, to have such a, a like this guy has clearly such a like just wants to be like a cool guy who kills stuff and saves people, but like he knows nothing about the weaponry at all. And I, I highly doubt that someone in such a you know olden times kind of setting that the you know fantasies usually are, and this one is like how he would be so. It, 
not informed into the practical uses of each kind of weapon and stuff. Like, is did he just have no no parents and just like read storybooks all the time and just like obsesses find, about like being I like grandeur? Like, like what the I fuck? Find in the manga or light novel, they all got their uh, backstories in that episode in the first part. So like, it was trying to trick us into believing they ex- they were like the main characters and then kill them off. Um. In this show, there's like. They can't do that because they have like an. I don't think they showed OP actually in the first episode, but you know we all we already know. <laughs> I feel like uh, so they can't do it as much, but like I feel like that yeah. would have made it more interesting. But like I still wouldn't have. I still would have instantly known mainly because I came from the controversy, so it, it can't really help me. It wouldn't have helped me, but I think it would have uh, helped other people. Yeah, it would have been at least a, I, a good idea and concept to like continue that try to that fake out, you know. Um, also. Yeah. Alternatively, I don't give a shit. I really didn't care about any of them, so like, giving them yeah. more time would have just... Uh, I do want to say the girl who got raped, which was the brawler girl with her crazy-ass kicks. I really love like martial arts anime and martial arts in general, and I can really appreciate those kind of characters. And plus, I just like her design in general. She had like, a black ponytail. It's very like, Asian-seeming. Pretty cool. Um, the best design, I think, of all of the first group. Oh, yeah. And so um, I was, like, kind of sad when she just got, like, basically fucked and oh, literally fucked. Um, that was, like, it was just, like, I already hate these goblins because they're subhuman. But on I, top of that, they yeah. have to disgrade the, those lowly things touching a human in such a way. How dare they? How dare they? Yeah, I think you would like gifters because there's literally an empire that's Nazi Germany, but in fantasy. Right. Literally, Hitler came into the universe, yeah. wrote, like told them that, uh, told them his ideology, killed himself, and they were like, "This guy seems legit." And so they created Nazi Germany, where like they're yeah, like, it's uh, it's it's by the like, head of house. Yeah. yeah. A, oh yeah, it does have that yeah, style. Yeah, drifters yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, that's what yeah, you're yeah, talking I, about, I right? Yeah, I still need to watch drifters, but I um, but when I when I was thirteen and I watched House the Ultimate with my friends, oh, I yeah, was cool. Helsing was my first anime ever. Because, like, my friend tried to, like, explain it to me. And he did it horribly. He was like, um, there's a vampire Nazis, but also vampire werewolves. But the race have uh, a vampire, and he's bad, and they're vampires. And the crusades happen, and the, and the church blows up London. And they, they <laughs> and the vampires <laughs> werewolves. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And, and this is my first experience with anime. And I was like, anime is gay. And I watched your bridge series, like, that's funny, but I'm not going to watch anymore. And then, like, two years later, when I was alone and had no friends, I was like, I'm going to watch anime now. And then I told <laughs> That's him, how you get like, into anime. <laughs> yeah. It was, it, 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 I respect what he did. Because, like, he's basically me trying to explain something to someone else. Like, how are you doing now? Because it's far more entertaining for me. Yeah, because like, that's explain. the the only cool parts is just like the I, for me the idea of like, yeah, Nazis and vampires happens. and vampires killing other vampires and demons and shit. It's all pretty yeah, cool. Like, oh my god, vamp! You would love Vampire Hunter B. Oh hell yeah! Just like my boy Nate did, <laughs> my boy best guy yeah. ever, my god. Oh, yeah, I, mean, he does, I would definitely explain Helsing Ultimate like he did though. Like there's fucking vampires and Nazi fucking vampires, and there's like, one Nazi's a werewolf for some reason, and then like the brace have like one cool ass fucking Dracula looking motherfucker who's actually Dracula, who's like the best vampire, and like he's like servant to this fucking woman, and she like sends him and there's a police woman who gets like bitten and turned into one because of she had giant tits and he's great and he's fucking amazing <laughs> and like, everything burns and they're like oh the crew the crew church is going to save us and they're like no fucking me <laughs> and everyone dies and it's amazing oh, yeah. I, um yeah you anyway, described it pretty well great review score great thank review. you someone should clip that someone should take a clip of that and put that somewhere i mean maybe yeah, one of us will but i don't know uh probably I'll not put it on my channel it's mine. Mine. <laughs> yes. Scorn is officially think, an anime reviewer. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, another thing is I really feel the biggest weakness in this show is probably the direction. Because like, I, I made an original edit. That was, I think that was a lot better. Because like, it had a lot of better flow in it. Then my computer broke and I lost it. So I had to make a shit one that I uploaded on my channel that I'm going to delete later. When I get the strength. Because like, I removed basically all the girl. The fucking priest girl who I don't want to talk about here so much. Just, yeah, the, know, the priest yeah. girl is just, oh, she didn't know anything just like everyone else, but she just survived and is like, seems to be kind of like loyal and oh, doesn't oh, think oh, the oh, Goblin Slayer is a bad guy. And she kind of like did, seems did. like she's with him partly to like learn some stuff, kind of. Uh, uh, did, she, did you, um, she pissed herself and the goblins were like, ah, lol. Oh, yeah, yeah, she did. Was, I remember that. That's pretty that awesome. That was so good. 
that was so fucking it literally cuts to a goblin smelling it I'm like yes this is actually fucking uh, anime of the year <sighs> yeah we need more uh, characters pissing themselves a fan uh, yeah. Uh, yes, the first uh, time I saw that was in uh, Queen's Blade. <laughs> I don't think I've seen it much more. Much actually. Um, I shouldn't have watched it when I was that young, but I did, uh, and now I am who I, don't I am think today. I should have watched Helsing when I did. Well, I mean, Val, well, you, you expressed you expressed a lot of regret about watching Mesoforth there when you were older instead of. In year 12 or something. Yeah, I, should, I need to watch Metzah Forte way younger. I feel like that would be so good. But, like, Queen's Blade is just... It's just literally nothing. Uh, like, any of the story and characters don't matter. It's just those kind of scenes are the only thing that mattered. So, honestly, I actually oh, kind of yeah. don't regret it wa- watching it so young. Um, other than, like... I just and remember enjoyed- one character that's a blacksmith and has huge ass tits, like ridiculous. I'm just like, that was the stupidest thing ever. And I even thought about that when I was a kid. Uh, I'd recommend all kids watch Queen's Blade now. Uh, I've been watching yes. a lot of uh, a bad anime are good when you're younger. Like, I like Elfin Lead because I watched it when I was younger. Uh, does, I wouldn't like it now. I tried watching it and I couldn't get past the part I thought was good because it was just that bad. Mm. Part of the reason was the dub is fucking horrendous. But And, and I, remember it, I remember the first episode being like this random cute girl was introduced and like given a character and stuff. <clears> and she like gets killed off in like the next minute and I remember loving that when I was a kid but when I was older it's like a lot less because like uh, she gets introduced only after you realize that shit's going down and then she's just like and it's not much she's just like oh I don't I don't want Mr. Fuckface to um not uh, to think I'm uh, bad I, w- I want to impress him I don't want to fuck up and she literally I don't understand where she comes from because they're in a hallway right she comes from the side oh, so this uh, fucking el- el- <laughs> and it's the girl who kills everyone like, the security guard and Mr. Fuckface is on the other side. And in this corridor, she somehow comes off from the, like, right of the screen out in front of, of a girl who kills everyone. Somehow. And she just murdered. And it's like, Hello. and it's like, and, and that, when I was a kid, I didn't think about that. I was like, oh, that's so cool. She just died. Her head was ripped off and he, she literally threw it at, at one of the security guards who caught it. And I was like, ah, fuck. Uh, but now I'm like, where did the head come from? Where did she come from? And that's a good and, question. And, yes. Yes. Uh, um, yes. I just want to say real quick that Elfin Lead is awesome, and and just be, uh, at least the main character Lucy is awesome because like her power is just invisible Lucy. hands. Yeah, that, I, I that really stretch like out. It. It's like yeah, it, it sounds like stupid and shit, and it kind of is. is I kind of like it for that, but it's just like how great is that? <laughs> just to have like She's straight up it. just hands. Yeah. The her hands literally better CGI than Goblin Slayer. I, Literally, I, it, honestly, and also as the Lucy pisses herself. This Hell yeah! Is, uh, I don't know why I remember this, but this is a thing. It, I think it was like towards the end of the series where it's just like the uh, oh, like a, it was the beginning a uh, slice of life part. Oh, oh yeah, it was a slice of life part. Um, I I mix up that. where the the slice of life parts end up because yeah. yeah, I only remember it for the highs, not the lows. Like, mm. like when she pisses herself. Hell yeah! Uh, I, I, uh, I, tr- yeah. I'm sad that I couldn't rewatch at least the first episode and like it. Oh well, I have the memories of goodness, and those won't matter. Yeah. So Goblin Slayer. The rest of episode one is just a uh, so Go- the Goblin Slayer dies. basically go comes and and saves the priest girl just because you just happening to kill some but hear about the goblins or something. I, yeah, I it wasn't I explained. It, I think it. I think it was implied that. Uh, he found out that they were going and just were uh, that yeah. they went and wanted to make sure they were okay. But it's weird because in the second episode, he literally says no to her. She yeah, that's the weird two part. So we sent one and ex- one of newbie events against one and there's this other one. Yeah, and it's like and it's like, three people uh, and it's one less than the four group that included our priest girl. Uh, and this the group he, he said no to was just like a three-person group. It did yeah. have a healer, but like... And he said it was well balanced, but like, dude, it was literally it's a whole less person than, you know. Yeah, and this team seemed balanced. You had two on front fires. You had the maids, and you had the healer. It seemed like a decent setup. Yeah. Uh, and, maybe it was uh, yeah, like just the details of the place. I don't know if each goblin nest has like uh, canonically like a like big bodyguard, big like. Uh no, they mentioned that the goblin that wasn't meant to be there. Ah uh, yeah. That like a. Uh, because the girl, like, 
See, they say that goblins are like all weaker and they weren't expecting it. But uh. they, I, I, they knew it was a cave. I remember the guy mentioned that it was a cave at one point. So like he brings his giant sword, of course. There's oh, a really idea. retarded episode, like episode like five, I think it is, where the guy is too fucking retarded to his get a club and he's like, I want a sword. And then goblins yeah. are like, have you tried using a club? And he's like, I never thought of that yeah, before. A- I just get a club. This is a new, new, new newbie, uh, and basically, like, there's a whole like subplot almost in that episode of like this guy just the main like plot. The it main might as well be the main plot, yeah. Um, I, I think the point was to show that this world is brutal, like it's meant to be like he's just finding rats and bugs and they're like dangerous. I actually liked the the bugs where like they actually showed up and were actually terrifying, and I was like, yeah, I'm fucking yeah. running away if that happens. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm a monk now. I will be a monk. I player. totally understood why he just ran. Because what happened was he killed a, a big rat thing. And, like, he couldn't get his sword out. And so... And, the, and then, like, three bugs showed up and started eating the rats and, like, screamed at him. And he's like, okay, fuck it, I'm off. Yeah, and so he's alive to this day, which is uh, really cool. Um, I wonder what happened I, I, to him. I watched that episode while talking to someone else. And I was like, I'm 90% sure he's going to die. Like, mm. they, they didn't, though. Mm. It was really weird because, like, they talk. For some reason, at first they like kind of like borrow a sword from someone else and like, yeah, I would love to, but my swords are all too like actually too strong for you. You can't use them. Yeah. Not like a dick, like earnestly. Uh, it was an earnest, yeah. You can't it was just like sword. their high level like hunter, you know, people that take up quests and stuff. And they like, I kind of, like, I would imagine that they just have like really good steel, which will probably be a little bit heavier. And so, like, they're the only people with the real power to even like wield these things. And like, it seems like the club that he, he got at some point. Like worked perfectly fine. Like yeah, I was, I was confused by that because he's like, I have no. I thought that he had no money, so he couldn't buy anything. I like the idea of this episode just ending with them being well. Like, we can't be adventurers then. We <laughs> we, we aren't up for it. I yeah. think that would have been the best showcase of this world is brutal than what they did do. But if that's not what they were trying to do, I don't know. Yeah, it because would have at least shown that there are some smart people and then there's some stupid people. The stupid people of episode one who all died. You know that like party group, like. They're the stupid people. I wanted to see them survive. These it was a guy and a girl who were like, yeah, I, and I, I, they. I wanted to see them just quit. That's what I was thinking too. At some point, it was like oh, at some point they they kind of have to quit. Like, why are you so obsessed yeah. with continuing this? You clearly don't have the budget for it. You clearly weren't so prepared for it. You know, like they aren't like dumb. But, like it's like why why do you keep doing with it? And it's never yeah. rung up as an option to stop. Just not be yeah, uh, this. They were a lot better because it was a, like he, his sword got stuck in the rat. I felt like that's like an actual reasonable thing that happens to people. You know, when you're oh, like, yeah. you don't know how a sword really feels until you like use it and like stuck inside. And like the m- bugs come up and they just run the fuck away. That's all human. Like it feels like, yeah, this is what like half the opening adventures would be just running into a place, uh, realizing you're outmatched and just fucking off. Oh, yeah, and that's uh, the, the heroes who survive are the smart ones. That's yeah. really interesting. Some of the episode that was really weird is they had an interaction with Goblin Slayer that was kind of cool because Goblin Slayer was like, uh, are you killing goblins? He's like, nope, you should kill goblins. And he's like, no. And then he doesn't do it anymore. I would have loved it if he kept like bringing it back to goblins. It would have been great, like, you should kill goblins. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, they were asking for him for advice and stuff and he was like talking about it in the, the context of okay. goblins. That was really cool. I don't know why we're... I, I do know why we're on episode, talking about this part about episode uh, five, but uh, we should probably go back and to three. Episode five, best episode of the series, contains Great. zero goblins. Uh, episode uh, okay, episode um, one ends with uh, the girls surviving, and they mention it in it, episode one that it's a commonly told tale apparently that like you know, adventurers go out to help goblins who like to kill goblins who start kidnap some girls and um, then uh, left. Apparently, they hadn't have heard. I, I had to rewatch the first episode just as before this podcast because I needed to make sure the exact wording. Because if, if it was a commonly told tale, I would be annoyed. But they said, the way she said it is like, they, t- they tell me or something, like, you know, like she didn't know that this was common. Because if it was, I would be so pissed. Like, so you didn't like come from more prepared. You didn't think this happens to the beginning people. Maybe we should do something. But apparently, it was something told afterwards. So I can kind of buy that. I can yeah. accept it more. It's, uh, it, was, it pissed me off a lot until I like you know the wording and then I I also girls that they rescued oh yeah we should talk about murder babies with goblins they just fucking kills them with apparently the exact club that he gives to the guy did he give him that club oh my oh, that's, a, that's a good question I, I, I actually like I really like the idea that he did though he just gave him a club he murdered babies with 
like yeah have it have this <laughs> oh i i i enjoy that too much Mm. Like if you have any, so any of you want to send me some uh, burbe, baby murder weapons, I'll be happy to take them off your hands. Yeah. Uh, um, go. One second. You know, if there's goblins in reality, I might just be the goblin slayer. I don't have any trauma with them, but I really hate <laughs> subhumans. I wanted to bring that up. Just again, just to prove, like I kind of like goblins. Goblins, kill them all. Kill all the goblins. <laughs> Goddamn goblins! Um, so, like, there's some cool, uh, like, non-human characters uh, in existence, not just in the series, like, bl- like, bl- just aliens that are blue alien girls who are just basically human, but like blue skin. That's really cool. Um, I like those. <laughs> I like things that are like, like, visually basically like humans and like function as humans, like entirely, like the elf girl, elf girl in this series in Goblin Slayer. And she just, like, lives, like, 200 or 2,000 years old. I forget how long. And, like, it's just, like, so awesome that, like, they're just humans, but better. They're just superior to humans. So, I just don't, I just want to say that I'm not just a human supremacist, is all I'm saying. Like, there's some nuance here. But, like, I genuinely, like, hate things that (laughs) are not human. And I think they have less value. Like, (laughs) what's What'd you say, Master Art? Like horses? Yeah, <laughs> fuck horses. Uh, at least they don't, like, uh, you know, do no. weird shit to humans, like goblins, like rape. Like, then I would want oh, all okay. horses. I, wanted to be the, I, would, I would be the horse slayer, okay? <laughs> the horse slayer. <laughs> if horses <laughs> rape people. <laughs> if horses are alright, horses have accepted as subservient to the humans. I'm not, like, yeah. going to get, I, I'm pro-human, but I'm very much like a, would the racist that exist, you know, to serve us? Mm. Oh yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, if they I'm, if they know their place, like they should be allowed yeah. to exist. I just yeah. So at end of episode one, uh, a cool detail was like all the girls are saved, and the one who has survived was um taken to a monastery, which is a uh, interesting thing. I like. Uh, shout out real quick to a YouTube video. Uh, if you can shout out one of those, um, if it's possible, uh, search up anyone who's listening, Alex Jones goblins and there's like a funny oh, yeah, like music that. video remix and it's great it's just like it's t- it's like talking about like like it's like Alex Jones talking about Trump like using a weird goblins metaphor but like the song itself if you just like ignore the like the Trump aspect it's just like I'm just saying this funny shit about like goblins and just like uh, if you just oh it's it's so good it's so good it Alex Jones is a silly guy all right yeah he, he's a fun guy he's a fun guy yeah, there's a reason why he's popular. Or at yeah, least has some, Muslim. you know, audience, you know? I was, uh, I actually, I uh, don't think you know this, art, but like back in the early, my early um, uh, Neo Taku days, I was the Alex, the real Alex Jones. That was fun. <laughs> I literally, I do this on so many just uh, common sexes where I just like find a situation where I can do the frogs gay joke. But like, <laughs> you get like, <laughs> amazing. Alex. I've, I've turned into just a meme generator on random YouTube channels. I like people love it and I'm like, yes, I'm so happy you exist. <laughs> I think my favorite was like two episodes in a row of an EU four play too. I made like fucking, uh, what is it now? Uh, Palpatine references to like, I'm pretty sure the same joke, but I changed it, like the names okay. and it was amazing. And I don't know why I love it so much because people are like, yes, thank you. This is amazing. I was like, I'm so happy. I love making content for people, even if it's a dumb fucking YouTube, uh, YouTube comment. Yeah. Like uh, that's uh that's the real stuff the, the little thing that yeah. gives you the chuckle, you know. I love that YouTube. Uh, I did the hot things because they literally gave me my life purpose. I love like Gangnam. I remember on one of the recent like a uh, uh, pedantic romantics, I got three of my comments with hearts, and I was like, yes, I was actually proud of this. Hell yeah! It's very sad that like no no November will be an achievement for me. <laughs> my, my life's horrible. I, I'm going like, to die alone. You survived. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How many days was Amber? Like, damn, uh, right? Ten. I, I, nine. I spent like two extra days because I like did it independently, realized it was no one in November. I was like, okay, <laughs> might as well. Mm. <laughs> so a week now, a week now. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so how is it to be in the last of the party? Extremely easy. There was like a one day where it was difficult because I kept touching my dick and I, now I'm fine. And now I'm like, yep, I'm completely fine. Oh, yeah. I've sent it. I, I'm already have control of the weather. 
I can see through time, you know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I can no longer you open contact. your third eye, kind of thing. Uh-huh. No, that's what I did. Right? What's up? Did, What's right? up, Master uh-huh. Art? What? He's gone crazy. Oh, He's shit. gone crazy. <laughs> Scorn, we're here for you, man. We're here for you. We're here. It's okay. It's okay, man. Uh, anyways, uh, so, so we're finally done summarizing episode one of Goblin Slayer. Episode two of Goblin Slayer. Uh, episode two is a lot less. Episode two is you just... You guys um, were talking about episode three or something. I, I, yeah, I said was- three at some point, thinking that we were way ahead. Than we actually were. I said five because I'm not interested in like the first four for some reason. Episode two is a uh, literally just um, it shows Goblin Slayer's home life where like he has his childhood friend, mm-hmm. and uh, he, oh yeah, introduces before, that giant character. fucking tits. Um, tits her tits, tits look at horrid. Like the tits drawn in this game are bad. Like it's like Terrific. it's so bad. It's uh, almost uh, like they're too round. It's too. It's very like what the fuck is happening here? And they they move too much. It's like this would, like I said before, Konosuba did this as a joke. You're doing this seriously. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. Konosuba was like, look, all of our women have to do this fucking thing and everyone laughed and now this was like, take me seriously. Goblin's there has a traumatic past and he's damaged but what's this woman's tits fly over here? Yeah, and he's just like apathetic towards it, I'm sure. Uh, it also happens, I think this is where the dark mage bitch is like introduced and she has even bigger tits. I was like, eh. Yeah. That's, eh. She looks At like, least that's eh. her gimmick clearly but like, like the childhood, not childhood friend, but you know the the girl we were just describing. Like um, she, you, uh, she was just like really like, why does she have big tits? Like, is it just, what, uh, what were you, you saying? Explain, can you explain to me why he was a dick to her in the past? Was there a reason, or was he just a dick? Because um, he's too. like, you want anything from town, and he's like, no. I was like, do you really want? You know, I'm going town. You want anything? I'm like, no, fuck off. I'm like, yeah. I um, thought I was to be killed by this point, so he's like being an asshole, but no, it happens like after this, or it's like directed horribly. So it's like, weird. it's meant to be like weird time jump, but isn't. It sounds like, like what, really confusing, just upon you saying it. So, if audience, if you're confused at all, like, we're, I'm 20 times as confused. <laughs> oh my god. I'm always more confused. So, uh, yeah, that's weird. Um, okay, so episode 2 is just, um, it explains his backstory. I think episode two does, where like his family were like killed and like raped in front of him, and he's like underneath the floorboards watching it happen by goblins, of course. Oh, yeah. blood dripping on his head, and he's like he's cr- curling up. Oh, he has like he has like an edgy backstory, but like uh, uh, to the later guts again. Guts has like the best edgy backstory. He's literally born out of the womb of his dead mother, who is hung, and it's amazing. The entire- <laughs> Killed and hung, and like he just falls out of a room, and he still has his own biblical cord, and it's like, oh my god, that's so. Good. It's such a good thing, like and uh, like and also one thing I like about Guts as a kid, he seemed like our I dude. He like seemed very nice and earnest of a person, and like yeah. I, and that's another reason I don't like goblins. Like he's just a dick even before the goblins like did what they did. I may be <laughs> more realistic for a kid, but fuck realism, kids are bad. Yeah, uh, I kind of flew over that. Um, I don't remember that part where he was a kid at all, other than like, his family got killed. Yeah. This um, might be episode 3 and I might be confusing it, but who knows. You know, I, I mixed up all of it other than episode 5, because I did marathon the show right before all the uh, this recording, but <laughs> I can't remember. I've been uh, watching weekly for reasons. E. Um, so episode 2 is just them uh, working together with him and Priest Girl working together to kill uh, a goblins in a tree. They have this yeah. weird fort thing and they've like kidnapped a girl and they're like dancing around her and then he's like he gets like a fire arrow and just burns the place down and then like, he uses the like um priest magic as like a barrier spell to like lock them in and it's great. Oh and yeah like, I love this that. is fucked. She, like, she's like this is fucked he's like they're goblins. What do you care? They deserve it or something. Or like they would do worse or something. I feel like if I was the priest girl at that point, I would be like mentally taking notes on, like, these tactics to just, like, completely and utterly, like, destroy these goblins without, like, just going into place. Like, I feel like she yeah. can learn so much from him and, like, apply, like, the tactics to other things. Like, mm-hmm. she has a big opportunity here, and I know she's not going to bank on it, is all I'm saying. Um, I think part of the problem is the world uh, seems to... I think generally the world is meant to be looked down on Goblin Slayer for just killing goblins. 
Yeah. Well, so it seems like, yeah, but I I don't really get that because like, if they're all doing this, be like a he would be a folk hero. He'd be like the guy who kills goblins all the time. Yeah, he's like, a lot more memorable than the normal adventurer who's like every other adventurer who exists. You know, he'd I mean, be the hero of the little guy fighting the little guys. Yeah, his name is literally Goblin Slayer, and that's how people know him. And it's like, how can like you just like be this distasteful of the Goblin Slayer? <laughs> like, it, I think. Like, how it's kind of implied to me, it just seems like uh, bad rumors about him started right away, and everyone just kind of continues believing it for no reason at all. Because other than that, he, like, he just actually would be a folk hero, folk hero like you said. Like yeah, Even in this magic world, because, like, he's literally just fine goblin, it's like, he'd be, like, an achievable goal to, like, most people. Because, like, instead of, like, because they show in, like, episode one or two where, like, he, like, stands for ages because he knows no one's going to get the goblin. No one's going to just even do the goblin stuff. So he knows he has time. But it's also weird when you consider the idea that like goblins have like taken people and he's just okay with letting them live. Because in the first episode where he kills the babies, he's like, it was a good thing that I came when I did because like these guys in like a day would have been ready to fight. Oh, but yeah. like, in the second, he just literally just waits around and like everyone looks and like, uh, that's a goblin slayer. And like, why do you care? It's really, weird. it's a weird kind of elitism because like five, the same guy who's like annoyed, like he's like a uh, goblin slayer, is like completely fine with like giving the guy a sword if he could use it. And he's like, I could, but like you can't use it. Like, uh, like I, that's what I mentioned. He was earnest about it. It wasn't yeah. like a dick. You wouldn't be able to use it. It'd be like I could, but like you just don't have the stats. I think so, like, we I, should mention really quick that um, apparently I don't know when this, when this is introduced, but like, like when Elf Girl comes, uh, they mention that there's like literally a demon king that was just like resurrected and so like I demon there's before. more demons episode, and shit i think in episode one they mentioned it at the beginning like mm. oh a demon lord been resurrected oh i'm gonna go there get me some gold and i really hate it so i think that's I like, like their angle but like maybe the manga made this more like clear and believable but like i'm just not feeling this whole like like oh there's more demons and stuff Ooh, it's such a big deal Ooh, because like uh, yeah Goblin Slayer is apathetic to this whole idea. He's just like, you know, yeah. gotta kill the goblins first, you know? The best we part won't... of episode 3 was there, like, is we actually, when I mentioned Folk Hero, he kind of is for, like, the other races, because, like, mentioned his different names. Oh, yeah. And I thought that was kind of cool. But, like, it also is a bit weird, like, I forgot the names. They're not memorable at all. One is, like, Beard Cutter. Cause, like, yeah, the goblins Bear Cutter, are, like, beard, beard Cutter, something like that. I don't remember any of the other ones. One's, like, Ogre Slayer for some reason. Yeah, but it's it's not ogre slayer, but it it's like, like ogre, ogre something. Like, it's like clearly, like in another language. I think yeah, that's how that it was introduced. Language. Yeah, the I, elven I, language. I hate all the the three car- episode three. I hate um all the new characters. I fucking yeah. hate the fucking elf because he's a dumb elf. I hate the dwarf because he's a dumb dwarf. I hate the lizardman because he's a dumb lizardman. They're yeah. all bad. It's like, like oh, they're, they're like. like Clear stereotypes. Oh, the the dwarf is stubborn. Ooh, he's hey, he's hey, he's a he's a stubborn boy and he's small. And, ooh. and then and the elf the girl guy. just seems like ineff- unaffected by reality. And it is implied yes. that she's like she was a sheltered like person, just kind of stood in the elf's place the whole time. And now she's first trying to adventure out, but she's like two thousand years old, man. Like how can yeah, she's like she's, she's like, just a make sense. the lizard man is like a quirky non humanoid race type guy. And he's, he's just pretty- like, oh, I, I'll, yeah, he's probably the best of them, but that yeah. isn't saying much. Um, but, like, what, he, at least like with communicating with other people, he's, like, nice. Uh, like, Elf just seems to be, like, sort of, like, too sensitive and stuff at some time, so we'll get to just get mad, and then the Dwarf yeah, Dude like, is just kind of, like, a stereotype, so, and no one cares. Because, like, the conversation with the goblins there is, we want you to help you kill us, the Dream and Army. He's like, are they goblins? Like, and the Elf, <laughs> for some reason, is pissed off, like, no. And he's like, but and he's like, I don't care. I'm killing me goblins. I'll kill goblins. And she gets pissed off at him. And then it's like, reveal that no, actually, they want him to kill goblins. And so she was just being a bitch for no reason. Yeah. She's like, so it's like the original like, plan. It's just she got like, mad. Like, oh, that he was suggesting that, like, like <laughs> in some way that, like, goblins are, like, a higher priority. And, like, she just got so mad for, like, I feel like yeah. no reason. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the episode podcast. Three. Episode three. Episode 3! Hey! Okay, uh, episode 3. You know, guys, since my dad left, it's not been the same. <laughs> <laughs> episode 3. I hate everyone. I hate everything. I hate... Uh, <laughs> I can't remember it. It was just like, 
just a testament to just and i've been saying that a lot but like i can remember four and five episode four and five pretty well of course with the controversy of episode one uh i remember that episode like perfectly but like two and three are completely unmemorable like yeah, two two the main point of two is like okay i just want to mention to a detail i like in two there's a random part where like when he sets the tree on fire one of the goblins like somehow accidentally smacks another one in the face and kills it and i'm like I had to, like, pause and watch it ten times. <laughs> what? Like, this happened. Oh, hell it's, yeah. It's completely random. It, like, sets it on fire. They jump on the roof to see what's happening. And then, like, as they, like, uh, Goblin Slayer shoots some more arrows at them, one of them randomly just hits another one by accident. And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, this is their big nest. Yeah, I'm sure I missed that for, like, a second. Uh, yeah, you, you would miss it. I only heard it because, like, I was, like, paying attention to it. Because like I think because I, I heard the sound and I had to like watch it again and 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 again He's like childhood friend and he's like uh, retarded. Well, like uh, on all the stuff. He like checks all the prints to see if any goblins are near. Yeah, he has this big procedure he does every morning. He's like an, uh, very strict about oh. this where every morning he checks the fences around his like neighborhood. Of like, did the goblins yeah, come? Yeah. Did they did they touch stuff? And he like fixes up the fence if ever it kind of gets fucked up and shit. It's like really like a, just a testament to just how intense he is with these goblins. And I really appreciated that, honestly. Like, yeah. to know he, he literally yeah. lives his life around goblins. To, yeah. to fuck, out, not to kill goblins, you know? Uh, <laughs> like, this is his full time career. There's a, a bit, I think later, or oh, uh, it's in the same episode where he, like, explains to, like, the people who are trying to recruit him that, like, the de- they're like, the demon lord will destroy the world. And he's like, and goblins will burn the city down first. Or village down first. I was like, yeah, uh, that's a really good, like, reasoning. I know oh, it's, like, okay. his excuse more than his actual reason. Like, he wants to kill goblins. He just wants to kill them. And, like, he's using this as, like, a, something he doesn't believe in, but he can, like, trick people into believing he, he believes it. <laughs> but it is definitely cool. cool to be, like... Yeah, it was a really cool line to just be, like, yeah, and, and the goblins will burn down villages first. And oh, it's yeah. really dumb. It's really dumb because, like, they literally want him to kill... Doesn't his name in that language mean, like, Goblin Slayer or something? Like, to the elf? Because he, like, says her... is weird. Yeah, and, I believe, like, each... Uh, like. There's, like, that one alternate version with, like, the beard cutter or something. Yeah. Um, but, like, in Elven, it's supposed to just, from what I gathered, like, is Goblin Slayer the name? Like, why was he confused when he was like, I don't want to kill demons, I'm just here for goblins. It yeah, doesn't, I don't like it. She's really bad in the next few episodes, then. Like, she's bad in everything. Yeah, it's like, she, it's, like it's like some weird... She, basically, I feel like she's created just to have this weird sense of conflict uh, in, no, like, hilarity like, with cute anime girl. But yeah. like, do you know like? I don't know. How like Costco was kind of like a a bitch to uh, Guts Boys can make complete sense. He just comes in and like, she loves Griffith, and like he just gets him. Like Griffith loves Guts, and like it makes sense why she's pissed off. And like her reasoning is like, you danger everyone. You don't care about your life, but your our lives depend on you. Her reasoning makes complete sense, and Guts is just being like a huge dick about not caring about his life. Oh well, yeah. And, yeah. And for like with her, it just seems like it was meant to be a generic uh, Sundari elf. Uh, I keep on saying lolly with her, even though she is not lolly. <laughs> yeah, she, it's like kind of weird how she like for an elf. I don't know if elves are just shorter or something, but like two thousand years old. It's like, was well, that do elves grow over that period? You know? Yeah. Like exactly. how is she actually just young? Is she just like would be that height relative to human age? Like, there's a whole lot of stuff not answered, and honestly, I'm fine with it not going answered, because I, I don't want this to be a lore, a lore show. I don't care about, like, the lore of the fantasy world. I think some stuff would be nice to, for it to be clarified. I think the world is uh, too generic for me to care about it. Uh, it's like true. a generic Japanese fantasy world that only exists in Isekai. Um, I feel like the, the world isn't even the point, it's just, you just need to yeah, know about the world but... enough to, like, know so that I there's guess. goblins and stuff. And, oh, there's another bigger threat, Demon Lord, uh-oh. But it's, like, not it even a focus, of, honestly. At least that's well, I think it, I think it becomes a focus. From yeah, that's heard. where it's headed. <laughs> because, obviously, yeah. these three people that are so focused, well, they're not so focused, but they're like somewhat, like, the elf girl clearly cares about, like, the demon stuff a lot, uh, the Demon Lord stuff yeah. a lot. And it's just clear where it's going. And that's kind of where I'm worrying uh, yeah, about it. Like but. Everything, people say things to try and, like, 
say why it is so is good to the like in response to the controversy and i'm like no this this is worse i don't care i just want to say real quick that in the in the slime anime that i mentioned earlier in this podcast like uh there's literally like i was reincarnated into another world as a slime yeah because that's that, a fucking thing of course that's a ridiculous name but like the second episode or the third like he gets out of the cave for after he ate the dragon that he befriended, and it was a tsundere dragon, by the way. Um, uh, did it happen like lame, or was this like an attack? Uh, it was just like oh, the dragon's trapped, was sealed in by a okay. the, her- the heroine like that. that'll come later, uh, and he's just oh, like, hey, cool. uh, let me try. Let's we'll try to get out of here. We're friends now. Let me that's help cool. me get out I of like here. I like that dragon. But dragon. Cool. He's just like, yeah, okay, I don't want to live anymore. Uh, Kill me. So. Yeah. Um, Episode two. I mean, episode two. Uh, after he like, um, after they killed the goblins by like sealing them in, he's like, "Come on, let's search the area. We can't let any escape." Because he's like, if they go away, they like teach each other more, and he's like against that a lot. Oh yeah, and that's also kill, kill them all. Yeah, he. That's also cool. That he's like, yeah, I, we can't let him escape. This is the part that I've, like in depth I like. I like that. It's like so, like like he has to kill them all, or they like teach each other and get stronger slightly. Like oh yeah, even like and he's like that'd be dangerous. The wisdom and power of organization. It's like he's really like honestly like impressive in that like he's taking this hyper seriously Goblin Slayer that is to like know everything about the goblins and truly try to kill all the goblins or at least the majority in his like uh, you know area. Like he can obviously only do so much as one person, but like he's yeah, he is super hyper efficient, and I like can't stress it enough with these adjectives like he is yeah. actually like it's really well sold in the show i don't think it's super well done but there's like good moments like you know like when he starts searching his house and stuff the worst part about he's searching the house for like tracks was that he keep he kept going into cg and he was like yeah oh god cg is the worst thing in modern <laughs> yeah <laughs> except for when it's good like in uh try. same that really like uh, takes away from any seriousness when he just like turns into a, C- a CG model for no fucking reason. Yeah. It's completely randomly out uh, of nowhere. Another reason uh, I recommend that's just another reason I recommend watching in a uh, higher speed like 1.5 or 2 because like it goes by so quickly that like I don't have time to like you know like really look at him that hard and I also like think that like if you turn a like 20 episode anime and you turn it into like fifth, like 16 minutes or like if you go two times speed into like what 11 minutes or so it's like even if you have to pause occasionally you're gonna fly through the show and like it, it's just like almost like it feels like it's a better anime for like not wasting as much time but in reality it's That's you know still it's still shit way to watch anime. Uh, I will not I don't watch many anime with higher speeds but like, I if you want to be one of those people, speed. yeah. If you if you're one of those people who want to try out or like taste test all the anime of the season, and you know most of it's not going to be for you, like just turn on the you know one plus or uh, two times speed, you I know, and just be blast able through to it. Fucking criticize everything about the mm. show, and when yeah. I'm watching it at two times speed, I can't. I agree. I agree. Um, I like being able to pick a fast. In fairness, uh, we weren't originally going to criticize the source, so we just like watched it. I just watched it fast because I was just doing it for my own interest. And it wasn't that interesting of a show. I actually I like mostly used it to go faster because I watched it right before this recording. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, we got to like, I was a little behind schedule. And I was like, hmm, very good to get going with this. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy that I did. Uh, just to yeah. helps the quality a little bit. Uh, honestly. Okay, episode three. I'm trying to remember what happens. The campfire scene is in episode three, where Goblin Slayer is like, "My dream is to kill all the goblins." Like they ask him what his dream is, and he's like, "I would like to kill all of them." <laughs> yeah, and then they're all like, "Oh yeah, it's pretty obvious, dude." It's just like one of those like, moments where like the characters were in sync with us, and we just one knew. Of the, and then you saw one of the weird, weird things is that like this, they spike his drink in that scene, and I was like, "Why though?" Did they spike it? Because I know they straight up just gave him, like, some wine and he just, like, took it oh. straight down. And he was like, oh. and then the dwarf dude was like, damn, dude. You, you, damn, that was good. 
I, I remember them specifically saying he's asleep now, and it's unlike the girl being like that's for the best or something. Uh, yeah. They're like, he's this girl. I remember saying like that happening, and I was like, why though? Was he gonna like stay up all night as God? Because that sounds like something he would do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could, I can believe that. They were like, uh, they're like, I would like it if they didn't know, but the girl, like the priest, did it herself, like just spiked his drink because he knew so he wasn't gonna sleep. But yeah, I I don't know. I'd have to rewatch, and I'm not gonna rewatch this ever. Yeah, I mean, it's in general, I just kind of felt it was like, oh yeah. Since we know he can, he's resting right now. We're at ease because we know he's a hyper Nazi about killing <laughs> goblins and being safe and all this shit. Yeah. Um. So that that's basically all that happens in episode three. It, it may have taken us like half an hour to talk about, but not much happens. Yeah. Oh, well, episode three ends with them. Uh, they 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 find the goblin hide. Oh, uh, we didn't explain this, did we? They hide him because uh, they think a demon general they. I don't... There was, like, some goblin activity in a place near them, and they were worried that, like, something would happen. So they just wanted him to check it out with these two groups. Apparently, it was in, like, near-elf territory. I think it was in human territory, near-elf territory, and yeah. the humans didn't like the elves, so they were, like, they didn't want just an elf to go in. Yeah. Or something like that. Um, so they, they wanted, like, help from a human. Because this is all, like... The dwarf... There's a dwarf, uh, you know, blah, 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 and blah, blah. I, I don't care. Yeah, this is this in a way like proves that Robin Slayer is a folk hero because they did come for him specifically. Um, and that's really cool. I love how he's like he's the expert in there, and like everyone's learning from him, even though they're I'm sure they're all experienced in their own way. Like literally, the elf girl knows how to curve her arrow shots, like to like yeah, I don't, magical degrees. Like I, it's I like, like... The, it's like a a magic bullet that kills John F. Kennedy, if you know that theory. Where the people like yeah. look at the angle of the shot and it's all retarded and not real, but she can literally curve her arrow shots. It's awesome in a way. Uh, I didn't uh, like it. Seconds. I hated it because it was like it didn't have any of the like feel of Goblin Slayer. When Goblin Slayer did it, it was cool because like we saw the fucking goblins go flying backwards in the second episode, and it had like good feel. In hers, it's like we didn't get much of it. Oh, uh, I agree. It's uh, I just liked it for like probably different yeah, reasons yeah. other than like the uh, you know Goblin Slayer feel. Um, I'm, they didn't really spam it, which was good. Um, and they didn't get any opportunity. They they go in right after that. Yeah. They kill like two goblins inside before the big massacre. Have any of you read the manga? Nope. Nope. What's manga? Uh, there's a that. light novel. That is the manga based on light novel, I think. Uh-huh. <laughs> the multiple iterations. Help! 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 I want to originally start this off as a goblin slayer. Is an anime based on a manga based on a light novel, but I didn't because I was too lazy and let Bump do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, whoever got this far, I congratulate you. You. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing right now. I don't know if you're playing video games. I don't know if you are some like a person with an actual life and is like dr- like driving to work in your car. You're like you listening to this piece by piece or some weird shit. I but like, all right, yeah. something like that. Like, um, please actually comment something. You don't have to say anything. Just like do something. I want to know if you exist. Yeah. Rare anime you. So anyone commenting here, uh, I'm just to assume unless a lot of the commenters, I hope, will be the people who got this far. Hopefully. Um, I'm sure there's some people who just make some comments like first. Oh, this is a shitty podcast. Oh. <clears throat> I don't. Kill I don't yourself. think we've actually gone in the first. I I wouldn't be surprised if see podcast because it is. I would be interested to talk to someone who says this here and like get their reasons. Because yeah. there's a reason, there's plenty, but it'd be kind of good. Episode 4. Um, you know, every time we start a new episode, I realize how much I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost there. We're almost I mean, episode 5, the, the current episode. I, I'm lying on a couch drawing. <laughs> I'm sitting down because of reasons. I, 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 want, I was, I was going to like play a game uh, that, of killing goblins, like some video game, but like I didn't have time... And I also don't want to turn on a game and then the music oh, come up in the OBS recording. So Can you just mute the fucking game. <laughs> nah, man, I can't have a second gonna, gameplay sound. It'll trigger me. I was gonna play a Warframe in the background, but now I'm like using my headphones and stuff, and I'm like, can't be asked. I'm just looking at the <coughs> gifts in our chat right now of uh, a Gunbuster girl. I think it's a good gift. It's like keeping me alive. Yeah, I love the jump rope. It's great. Episode four. <sighs> 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 Uh, I'm trying, but I can't. Uh, I'm the goblins. Dude, this is a 
This is a funny hero. I'm not. I legitimately can't. Goblins. Goblins. You must lead the goblins, man. We mm. must lead the goblins. <laughs> All right, episode four. This this is our millionth time trying to say what happens. Basically, uh, they're in the hideout uh, that they you know questing to uh, with the elf girl and uh, their crew and dwarf and all that. Uh, so that's this whole episode takes place in this dungeon that um, used to be apparently like some religious temple or something, but it's been abandoned. And uh, so so this all happens in a. Temple. Dungeon temple. Dungeon temple, yeah. And basically, one of the first things they notice, uh, or they come upon while, uh, you know, going in here. So, if you like rape, this is the... Nothing happens in this episode. Not on screen, at least. But it's uh, implied. So, in oh, the yeah. temple, they they come to a crossroads. I thought, I thought you were talking about the episode, like, nothing happens on this episode. Yeah, screen. nothing happens in this episode. I'm just running through it. There's just, like... There's there's two two plot points. Uh, I'm gonna mention this one, and I'm gonna mention uh, the actual fight, and then uh, just say that there's a fight, and then skip over it. <laughs> so they come to a crossroads uh, after in this temple for a little bit. They're like, all right, so which way are the goblins? You know, left or right? And they say the dwarf says to left. There, you can see the ground. It's been more walked upon. It's, it has more wear. So they're clearly in that direction. But to the, the goblin slayers, like, all right, let's go right first. You know, it's that kind of thing where, like, you're playing a video game, and you're like, all right, clearly this, I know the exit might be this way, but, like, or, like, to go to the next place, but I want to, like, visit this side place first, just to see what's there. And so they go over there, and it's basically just a big a room where they, like, you know, put, like, goblin shit and, like, like rotting shit in there. Yeah, li- literal goblin shit. Like, actually. L- literally, that's a poop room. It's just everywhere. Uh, and they go in there, and there's uh, an elf chained up to the wall. Of course, all slashed up and, like, brutalized. And obviously that implies that, like, well, if she's there, well, then they probably raped her. So, uh, that was just, like, a spooky dooky thing for our elf girl. The, the, the one that came with the, you know, this part of the party. Cause she just instantly, like, threw up a little. And oh, yeah, it was tra- almost traumatized by it. She, like, had to, like, mentally, like, had to collect herself for a while. Yeah. That was a big thing. And then after that, they obviously go in the other way. They come back. You, know, um, they, um, you, you the, missed some parts. The, the, the elf, like, the elf was like, good. Yeah, she's like she said something, but she wasn't like they could have hear. She wasn't yeah, like she saying said, the first sentence, and like it's implied Goblin Slayer is going. She's like says fucking a kill, 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 kill. And, uh, kill. and he's like, and they're like, and everyone's like, oh, Goblin Slayer is going to kill her because we've seen episode one. And like yeah. the elf's like, no, don't. And then and then like and then she's like the goblin or something. And the goblin comes down, he kills him. And it's like, what the fuck? Why would you keep saying kill, kill, kill? And then this the goblin pops out. Yeah. Then, yeah, it's fucking dumb. Yeah, it was pretty. Like, it was a funny fake out. Um, since it was it such a quick scene for me with the two times speed, uh, I was like, all right, uh, I just there was a fake out. Cool. I kind of fell for it. I just like that scene. Just like kill, kill, kill. And the goblin there was just like, uh, whatever. He was just yeah, like, that was, was written bad. Yeah. Why would she say kill? She should say goblin or something's like goblin. here. Or like behind me. Behind watch out. Thing. Like there's yeah, a million other like things that. that she probably would have said. There's no implication that since she's an elf, she uses weird terms of speak or anything. Like, no, because like the goblin, the elf we know doesn't. She just talks normally. Yeah, she talks like perfectly that. fine. Unless the subtitles don't put that across. I, I, it would be I, a good I, world building element. Um, I feel like, I know Digibros talked about this on Iron Games uh streams uh where like if a fantasy or sci-fi story like just a story that takes place in another reality uh, whether it be past future fantasy uh like it either has to go all in and like all characters have to have their own like weird accents and stuff and everything's gotta be explained and stuff or it just should not do that at all because in yeah. mass effect andromeda there's just we're just one guy with this like very like american slang but it's like you know, it's way in the future as Mass Effect is, and so it makes no sense at all why you'd have that any of that slang or anything accent. So it's yeah. just like fucking retarded. Mass Effect's kind of weird because like most of the races have perfect translations, and then there's this one race that has like has to say their emotions before they like do anything because like they can't be understood. So it'll be like angry, I don't like your face, or it'll be like confused, why would you say that? Because, like, they're apparently so different. It's kind of a cool world-building thing because they're, like, everyone else is, like, humanoid and they're a slime thing. So they're, like, uh, so, you know, they have to, like, tell people. 
Yeah. But like, but I don't like, I kind of, I was okay with like Universal Translator in the original Mass Effect series because it wasn't about like discovery. It was yeah. about like a, like diplomacy and stuff like how this universe works. The, like, the, how did, the like, diplomacy and uh, it was a little bit of a drama at times. Maybe the weaker end of it. But yeah, it was definitely the world was not as much of a focus. It was annoying in Andromeda because I thought the purpose was like, we're going to a new galaxy, see what new life is that. Oh, it's just this thing and they already have a language translated. Oh. Hello. And like literally two races, which you find out are technically just one. Oof. And they like both incredibly generic. At least or the humanoid ones at least were like all different and cool in original. It was like, you have the all like a genderless society who like can fuck anything. Yeah, that's their law. They can fuck anything. Yeah, wasn't that the uh, blue people from the first yeah, series? Yeah, the Asari. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, and um, the cool bit in that law was like, they don't like, they actually look down upon people who like sleep with each other. Like their own race. Because they see it as like not, uh, like a uh, weakening the gene pool. Well, um, sorry. Uh, sleeping with people out outside their race? No, inside their race. Inside uh, their race. Like, so it's like, it's like, like uh, why would you be incestual in this, in this way? We want to gather genes from other races? Uh, kind yeah. Of thing? It's kind yeah. of like, in, yeah. It's kind of, it, and also there's a chance that like, if you, uh, the way they have sex is like, apparently they do it, can do it through sexual contact, but like, it has to also be consensual. They have to actually, uh, they have to care. I don't think the other party has to. So mm-hmm. I have a mind thing. Oh, that's really cool. I don't, it never, didn't know it any never of that goes, playing the games, but yeah. What's even, uh, even cooler is apparently they like look attractive in a different way to every race. So like at one point you're in like a strip club and these guys are all like sitting around one dancer, a sorry dancer. And the guy, like one of the guys is like, why do you guys find her attractive? She like looks just like a human. I was like, what are you talking about? She looks just like a, a Turian. And he's like, no, <laughs> she's like, have you seen her horns? And it's like, it's a really cool detail. Like, they literally That's can like cool. just make, yeah. Yes. And it, Mass Effect's cool with some stuff like that. Andromeda is, Andromeda is complete shit. It has nothing to offer. Yeah. I, I, a part of writing that annoys me to this day about Andromeda is like, fucking, these random guys are like, they Episode 5. <laughs> yeah. I know episode 4 is still going. Episode yeah. 4. So after they deal with the, the stupid, they're like a, the, um, the elf Elizabeth girl. Has magic. Yeah. Has like oh, a yeah. magic skeleton helper. And he summons a skeleton helper to like take her away. Yeah. To take the left elf back to the elf nest and then like, uh, and stuff. I didn't yeah. like his powers. I thought they were kind of like, eh. Yeah, it's like, uh, I'm pretty unimpressed that you're just summoning like a like shitty, like, Bone monster, like who? Who gives a fuck? You know? Yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm completely disaffected with normal skeletons. They have to either be giant or like some kind of monster skeleton for me to care. It was kind of a lizardman, but it's like also like CG shit. Yeah, it's almost CG. Okay, so yeah. Then they find like a big place where all the goblins are sleeping. Yeah, it's and like I a big like middle part. of a column coliseum kind of like set up, yeah. but really tall. Uh, you before you said it was like kind of a temple. It was meant to. I think they said that it was like a precursor building, like the is ancient building. Hmm. Yeah. Like, uh, and I think they also meant something about magic, not something about like not getting. They were worrying it. about uh, a shaman, which is uh, a goblin that like is like a good magic user and can sometimes block magic from being used uh, in an area. So they just want to I know think, uh, what the situation was. I think Goblin Slayer. I think uh, mentions that because there's no totems, there's no shaman. And they're like, well, what could that mean? He's like, I don't know. Which should have been like, it should have been a bigger moment than it was. Goblin Slayer not knowing should have been a way, you don't know? He's like, yeah, we should be cautious. But like, instead it was just, I don't know. Or like, he, he said it less like, I don't know, more like, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> Which is incredibly dickish. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, it came off yeah. as like a very like, you know, who knows what, what's going on with them. Uh, and I feel like now, like in retrospect, looking back at the episode, since they have like this big ogre as like a bodyguard, spoiler alert. Um, uh, it's like a general, and they're like his bodyguards, the goblins. Yeah, you he like hired them, like, them and all that. You know. Yeah. Um, so yeah. All right. Let's let's. Uh, did we finish episode four? We didn't no. get to the ogre part no, yet. Okay. So uh, the part where I don't like it, it was a bit. It was a thing about um. They found a bunch of goblins asleep, and like goblin says, like, all right, what magic do you have? I forgot who he asked. I think it was the lizard one, yeah. who is like a, he has like silence and also sleep spell. Yeah. And oh, so, no, it was a, it was something weird because like, uh, I, they, oh no, 
I, I was, I'm just confused because they like they woke up and I think they put him back to sleep. I was like mm. confused why they woke up at all. Well, I know that like when they actually did it, like the the dwarven dude, the, the whatever race he is. Uh, I feel like seeing dwarven. I found it sounds silly, but like. I believe he had one of the spells, and I don't know how the spells actually work, because all I could tell is just they fell asleep and they stayed asleep. So if they did get back up, I have no idea. Um, but Yeah, the problem is that the most magic we've seen is from the priest girl, and she apparently gets it from her god. So she has to pray, and like she gets new spells because her god like gives it to her. Yeah. Not because like uh, she like learns new things, which mm-hmm. is uh, only really a detail I got, because like, I know D&D. So it's like, yeah, priest came from the god. Yeah. And, like, it's also, line. the dra- the lizard dude, like, prays to, like, a dragon god or something. That seems to be, well, like, yeah. kind of canon thing. Um, so he yeah, has he his own to... god. Just kind of interesting. Think it, yeah. So what happens is that they see a group of goblins asleep. They, I think one wakes up. And so then they have, like, uh, I forgot if it was, like, I, I'm cut between if it's actually a sleep spell or a poison spell. Like, poisons them and, like, knocks them out. And then a silence spell to keep the rest asleep. Yeah. Something and like I that really happened. Uh, one of them woke like, up just to show us that, like, it was kind of poisonous. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, so that's I was just confused. Happened. I'm just retarded. It's okay. Uh, it's all good. Um, it, it was very I silly because only one of them woke up, and this is, it was weird. Yeah. Um, and so they, what next happens, they, they come down after using those spells, and they, like, finish a bunch of the, the goblins off with just knives. I hate this bit because I really don't. It was, like, completely, like, the goblins were killed in, like, a minute. It's fucking goblins there. And it's like, nope, the goblins are dead. It's like, I don't... Oh, I I'd want be to fine with that if they brought more goblins in. Like, that. Why, why Why? would all, every single one of the goblins just be in that one area? Wouldn't they be, like, more scattered out through the, throughout the temple or the ancient temple, whatever it wouldn't is? It like, uh, wouldn't they be, like, constantly fucking dead, you know? Because, like, uh, you know, to keep the numbers up. Like, you would think that she would be, like... Like, for some reason, they keep her in the shit room instead of, like, you know, in their bedroom. Yeah, I mean, it's a, probably a public place. They all, like, walk out there to take a shit, is what I imagine. Oh, okay. I think that might actually be the reason then. Yeah. Yeah, and so while they're that. there, they're like, all right, let me, like, like okay. bust one, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's actually the reason, which is actually kind of funny. Is, is, <laughs> okay, g- good one, Goblin Slayer. You get a point. <laughs> nice on you. <laughs> yeah, I don't... It's like, I, the magic just, like, instead of being resourceful, how would have Goblin Slayer dealt with that situation on his own? Would he have, like, a been sneaky would he have like tried to sneak kill a few set up a trap so like when they wake up and come for him like you know would they like bomb fall in them all or would he like try and hit and run would mm, he, it's like, a very interesting thing because his approaches thus far have been like all right let's um, let's uh, use our like positioning as an advantage so i imagine like he definitely tried to like stay at a distance at first and just pick them off either smoke them out to come to him to like cut, filter them into a hallway or something where he can handle them better Something yeah. like that, um, to like just do take advantage of the surprise attack and to like move move them into an area without them realizing it. You know, yeah, it's actually yeah. like pretty smart and like calculative. Uh, it's not that impressive as I'm making it out, viewers. But like, like for like a guy that just one day is just like you know I just got to kill all the goblins. You know, based upon his like past trauma with them, like it's pretty impressive how responsibly he takes this to. Both, you know, take his own safety into account and the efficiency of killing them. Yeah. It's, like, clearly, like, the mangaka or the light novel person thought this out. Made the original yeah, but, like, this fight, he did not. He just, like, magic and he's done. Yeah, it's like he had no initial, like, his own tactics. He just, like, hey, what magic do you guys have? And they came up with a, a thing on the spot, which was, you know, I get it, but, like, what about, like, his classic tactics, you know? Because without that, yeah, like, he, I, I wouldn't know what he would he would have actually done, honestly. Like, so far, he's only ever fought goblins, like, minus well numbers. How would he, would, would he ever be in a situation where he's, like, fighting five at once? Would he be able to do that, or would he just never be in that situation? Like, they'd be, they're showing him change, but they haven't, like, shown us, like, what, he's, what his efficiency is normally. Because oh, yeah. We, we haven't we seen him. See we enough. saw, like, a small nest in the first one. The second episode was, like, uh... You know, his clever tactics just kill them all. Like, set them on fire and lock them in. That was cool. But, like, and then we don't get enough. We didn't get, like... like yeah, I, I want to see him adapt more and go into different, like, you know, situations. Because yeah. it is his career to kill goblins. So, like, why not, like, show what a, a career's 
goblin killer would actually learn over time and like what yeah because that's the mo- probably the most interesting bit is like of his like entire anime is that he's like obsessed with this one monster that's kind of a uh, intelligent can kind of grow because like uh, he, you know he's constantly about killing them all so they don't learn anything or like get any stronger yeah so keep it'd down be interesting those black to see, people like, yeah it'd be like i think a more <laughs> interesting series would be like early goblin slayer like year one goblin slayer like after he's done it for a while and like the goblins like uh get a lot smarter than they did and like now he has to like a second so like he has to like or oh, the goblins are like saying traps and stuff for me now or whoever mm-hmm. but yeah in this episode he just fucking he does it and they all kill him and he's like eh. yeah it's eh. like uh in in the hallways you know going towards that like fork that we mentioned earlier like they were checking for like traps and stuff or a trap was mentioned at some point but like there was no traps and like that's kind of disappointing that they like were that open to it like a ge- a big general ogre lives there zero traps it's like i get it yeah. he is a big dangerous dude but like why would you want your goblins to die like wouldn't they be concerned about and set their own traps like like come on like there's gotta be something here yeah the uh, goblins don't like seem as much as a threat until they are which right. i guess you could say is a benefit but it's also a fucking shit because it's like I don't believe they are all friending until they like kill someone because the mangaka decided that they were smart enough to do this now. A little too convenient at times. Yeah. I want to be sold on the idea of the Goblin Sire, and I want to be sold on the idea of the Goblins, yes. uh, which we kind of like just went talked about like both just uh, mm-hmm. that last there. But um, what else happened, Scorn? Uh, I actually wanted to mention like uh, you have a scene berserk, so but do you know about the hundred person battle or whatever? I've heard of it, and it's, yeah, it's apparently really on epic. A... Go ahead. Yeah, like, wasn't it like, all right, he takes on every single guy, uh, and, like, at the end, he's, like, like really, like, basically fully out of energy. Like, he, he, is yeah. pu- he is pushed to the limits, but he still did something, like, amazing. I think that's yeah, kind of uh, cool. It's, yeah, it's really great. Because like, it's basically just, like, he gets a 100 guys versus him, and it's... For, it's like not a strategic award. It's literally just him like killing people. It's <laughs> it's not amazingly animated, but it's done well enough that you get it. Like he cuts people, and you're like, oh, he cut that person. He like you know, because like a lot of them are archers, so he like grabs people, uses them as a shield. He hides behind the tree and like jumps. Out. He moves around so fast that like you can tell that they're like fucking shocked and can't tell what the fuck's happening. They're like this guy's killing them all. Yeah, it's yeah, not really like, like phasing them. Yeah, this like, is cause uh, the furthest the guts is like pushed in a while. So like the furthest he is in the early show is that like I suppose for his, like fight with Griffith, but even that was like a it wasn't to the death kind of. But like, it's yeah. really it was like a really great moment that really sold me on guts as like a human being because not only is he fighting in his head he's like oh, what the fuck am I? Because like, the context is that him and Costco are like trapped and like he basically takes on the hundred people so that so he might escape and like go back to Griffith. Griffith, because he realizes that like uh he doesn't really care, like uh like she cares about Griffith more than um not more than him, but that like uh he doesn't care about his life, so he's less useless useful to Griffith. So he's just like I'll fucking die. I like he's like you're more important. You have to like make sure he lives, and I'll like make sure you live. And it's it's and he like comes to the conclusion about wanting to live or something through that fight, where he's like, all oh, what am I doing? Why am I alive? Like, as he's murdering everyone. Oh, shit. The great like, a big character actor. arc, big character moment in this crazy fight. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, the best part is that uh, for, like, the bloopers, his voice actor makes fun of it because he's like, uh, what am I? He's like, what am I? Where am I? Why am I? Episode one. I mean, chapter one of Guts' new book, The Meaning of Life. Because his, his voice actor is great. <laughs> he, he makes constant jokes like that in it. Oh shit! Nice. Yeah, but, but it's like it's a, it's like a super it's a fucking badass fight, and it's also a complete like character arc for him in that like one thing, one fight, and he's like, it's it was like you know it's him pushed to the limit. This character who he's seen as ba- basically invincible, and he's like pushed to the limit of almost like being broken. Mm-hmm. And I feel I feel like they, I want something like that for Goblin Slayer, but it might be a bit unfair because this was like in an episode like twenty or something for the original anime, and this is like episode four of Goblin Slayer. Oh yeah, it's it's unfair, but it's also completely fair because like, why the fuck should I watch this show if I can just watch Berserk again? Yeah. Oh, actually, you remind me of the first episode of this show is literally just the first episode from a Kamiga kill. Now, I don't think you've watched it. 
Have you... I've watched episode one of Akami Ga Kelly. Yes. yes um, so, like, it's... So, I could literally make, like, screenshot comparisons of, like, the, the key aspects of the, of the episode, and it'll make complete sense to anyone who looks at it. And it's like, I just want to say that, like, just to compare them, it's like, okay, dumbass kids uh, try to adventure out of uh, and, and tackle something, tackle the world, kind of, in a way, in a very broad like, phrasing of it. Yeah. And they all and they all die, but then one of them survives. And, then and he so, becomes super edgy as a result. He becomes yeah, super edgy. And so, it's it's yeah, an insanely so edgy first class. episode. Um, you know... You know, priest girl in this uh, in this series is the the one who survived, and then the ma- main dude, quote unquote, in a uh, uh, Akamiga Kill is the one who survives, and it's just like, oh no, shit's fucked, and it's just like, I get it, it's a g- great way to start by starting with something super edgy and like people dying, but like it's just so similar into like the characterization of the world, like that first yeah, episode's cause... use is like functionally the same in both series. Yeah. Uh, the a bit of a difference in them is that like uh, in this one the goblins are, like the lowest thing and they're still like extremely dangerous. In a comic, yeah. kill the idea is that the world couldn't kill these kids, but like the capital is so evil that the people there can't. Yeah, the rich capitalists just get to like fuck with people and like they just pick people up and shit and like they just go unrivaled and that's the sort yeah. of danger. This new like not new city, but like the big capital is like ever there's just, like insane amount of corruption. In it's like, literally called the capital in the series. I don't think they give you a name. Yeah. And Pris is also just the empire as well, not like a name. Well, but uh, it's a it's yeah. a big part of the show, so I get it for a comic a kill, and I uh, I kind of get it for so, Goblin Slayer. It's kind of justified. I don't think it is because like episode fucking four, he kills all those goblins without even thinking about it. I don't think he's gonna be that Goblin Slayer. Yeah, it's a uh, I. I'm kind of conflicted because I think each first episode of every anime should be representative of the feel of the rest of the series but then it's like how can i say that each anime should conform to that formula you know yeah so it's like it's a bit silly of me to do so but like at the same time the expectations you know i'll get from a first episode it's like i'm only going to be disappointed with goblin slayer going forward even if they Um, didn't like go go off the focus of the goblin slayer and more to like as we mentioned earlier where we think it's headed, it's like, it still was never going to hit that peak of edginess, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, to bring it back to Berserk, because I have to, uh, the first mm-hmm. episode of this anime is, like, completely different to the rest of the series. I think you probably know about it, because, like, it's pretty big. We, like, uh, the first episode is set completely after the entire series. And it's, like, uh, so it's... <coughs> so the rest of the series is set in a more um, normal world. And then, like, the world you see is, like, a dark fantasy in the first episode. Mm. Uh, it's actually different to, like, uh, the manga and the movies is because, like, a bunch of magic stuff was, like, introduced in them. But, like, not in the old... Uh, the old anime just ignores literally all the magic until the end. And maybe a bit towards the middle and stuff. So, like, when it comes, it's, like, it fits better with the dark fantasy. Like, they have that fucking fairy. I forgot his name. I don't like him. Like, not a gay person. I mean, like, a little fairy. Oh, yeah, it was, the, like, the bar scene, and Gut yeah. saves the fairy, because he gets into yeah. a fight with in the people. Original, what he just, in, the, in the anime, he just saves a cute girl, which is infinitely better. Hell yeah. I, I, my head can't even see dies afterwards, because they, like, burn the village down. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Literally like, nothing matters. <laughs> yeah, it fits with, like, berserk and stuff. I think in uh, the new fucking thing, try to have a scene like that. Where like, uh, but he did it more directly. Where like, she like dies and turns into a zombie and like kills her granddad, and then guts has to kill her, which really shit because then buzzer, then like guts fucking vomits as well. And it's like, why though? Yeah. Like I get that he killing a child probably is a normal. Fo- Actually, no, fuck this. He killed a child already. <laughs> Spoilers for Berserk. <laughs> but he does kill a child at one point, and he's like horrified by it. But he doesn't vomit. Actually, he might. Yeah. But like, he's like horrified by it. But this is like before this in the co- in the timeline. The new, the one where like he kills a child. Uh, from what I got from people talking about it, the entire part in the manga is just like one of the first, when the Berserk wasn't good for like the first few episodes and first few um, chapters because um because he didn't know what he's doing and then he like went into the flashback to Golden Age and then realized what he's doing. And like actually made like Guts a great character. 
but before that he was just like uh, edgy or oh, look at this guy he just murdered a child <laughs> No, <laughs> killing children. No, limo. Kick. Kick, 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 kick. <laughs> yeah, you have to watch the reason anime, alright? Please do. I will try to watch this thing called... I was about to say... I was about to call it Guts again. Um, yeah, I, I keep calling him Berserk. <laughs> I keep calling him Berserk. Like, yes, Berserk. <laughs> yeah, I, berserk I need to wa- like watch for Berserk. I don't know if I want to read it. Because uh, since I know there's like a bunch of deviations... Like on the focus of the story and stuff, and some people have some problems with that. And it's like some of it's probably clearly padded out, but I, uh-huh. I don't know what happened. You, I've seen like, you, like care, I've seen like the like, first uh, episode of the show, and like I I can't get pad. It can't be. I don't find myself willing to watch more. So does it get different right. after the first episode? It's different, but I don't know how much better. It gets less um. Uh, I think the episode after that is uh, like backstory and stuff for Guts. Which sold me on Guts, by the way. Like I told you, he fell out of a tree of his dead mother's corpse. It's uh, fucking amazing. Like he's, uh, uh, I think I'm saying that one clearly. She's like hung from a tree and like the entire village is and he like falls out. Yeah. Like why was she like lynched or something? We don't know. I don't think there's any reason for it. Because so, I almost feel like it instantly makes me think, is this a devil child? Is this like a, 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 a child yeah. of a, a, a devil worshipper or something, and they just killed her? <laughs> but uh, that's, I don't, uh, that's pretty cool. I, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't read the manga, so I don't know, but I hope there's literally no connection. It's just completely random. Like, it's a random act of, like, it's, it's also set in a world where, like, a hundred year war is going on with, like, these two other countries. So, like, I assume it's, like, a random uh, act of violence then. Mm. But, like, I don't, I hope, I really hope it isn't, like, ever given a reason. Because, like, they cool. also, later on, I, yeah, I just want it to be a random act of violence, you know. Because you said that, like, yeah, sometimes war is shit and, like, this horrible shit happens. Mm-hmm. It'd be very interesting. I feel like if I just saw that in the, in the second episode, if I just, like, watched the second episode and saw that, I probably would have continued with it more. So I'll probably take it right up at the second episode. Since I, I've yeah. seen the first episode, like, three times trying to get into the series. So I, I, I know it kind of well. Yeah, I've also probably watched it three times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, Goblin Slayer, episode 5. <laughs> oh, we missed that, got the Demon General episode 4. You talk about this. Uh, I don't care. With the de- Demon General of uh, 4? Um, he is basically like, they killed all the goblin, goblins, and, you know, basically, the ogre comes out like, you killed all my goblins! How dare you? And then it's like, obviously, a fight breaks out. And it's just a big fight scene. Pretty unimpressive scene. Uh, is there any details I'm keeping out here? Um, I don't know. He ki- Goblin Sayer kills him. He like, well, first I want to say, uh, Ogre threw, like, hit Goblin Slayer and flew, made him fly into a column. You know, big fancy column. And it was ugly because it was CG, so it wasn't that cool. But yeah. what... what effect it had in the battle is that he was knocked out for like a minute and like priest girl had to wake him up and then give him some potions and stuff um and he basically like as as we kind of like heard a little bits of this we're like hinted at earlier in the episode uh goblin slayer sometimes gets scrolls magical scrolls that like can only be used once because that's how scrolls work in this game just like Many other games, just like Final Fantasy, I, for example, uh, scrolls I think work like that. I think it's a this powerful world scroll. is like heavily. I think uh, this this world is heavily based on like D and D and stuff. Mm, it's like uh, less like actual video games and uh, move like video games and books and stuff, and and more like just D and D. Yeah, uh, it is very fun- funny with the scroll thing because it is literally like an exact same mechanic of Final Fantasy, I believe. Yeah. Uh, the thing about the scroll, what they mentioned, is that it was like a teleportation scroll, but he, like, drew it on the bomb of the ocean or something. So, like, it just shot a shit to the water that, like, cut the demon generally in, in pieces. And it's like, oh, that's good. Yeah, he used the, the scroll in a very creative way to kill the demon king. And yeah. then, not demon king, but, you know, the general dude, did he's an ogre. Yeah. And, you know, he just kind of, like, with his body still there, and I think his arms were also cut off a bit. It's so like the the, yeah, it's all- the the ogre could do nothing, and he just yeah. Goblin Slayer just walked on his chest, and then just like 
say you were saying like at some point the goblin the ogre said something and he and goblin slayer replied with you know you're not like as much a priority as goblins are oh yeah i was trying to remember the line i i that was real good and because it's so one. funny because yeah. this, this ogre guy thinks he's such bad as shit and he can just replace the goblins if they die as long as you, you know, kill these guys but like in the end like goblin slayer doesn't give a flying fuck about this ogre guy you're like yeah. you're and he just instantly puts a sword through his head and slashes down the whole skull. It's crazy. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, shit, because he just fucking killed that person with no, like, effort and was like, yeah, goblins are worse than you. It's really, that was a really funny moment, honestly. Like, that to was... be, like, shit on and belittled, like, indirectly and genuinely from Goblin Slayer when you're just about to die. Like, and the thing, which I think is broke in the next episode, like, Goblin Slayer, Last me a blacksmith for like another scroll or something. Yeah, he was uh, asking know. for a replacement or something. Yeah. yeah, but you know it'd be cool if he knew how much like money he had, so that like it we this would matter. Like him using that scroll would actually feel like a a he, big setback financially. because yeah. I'm Cause sure like, he just saves all his money. Yeah, he just like, to put it back into because, goblin uh, slang. Yeah, he pays rent because of reasons. I don't know. I think he's... I don't know who, I don't know if that's, like, his childhood friend's dad or wife or, or husband, I mean. Yeah. I think it's like, a, I don't, a father, I think. Yeah, I assume so. But, like, he's, like, he... Do, Goblin Slayer stays with him and he pays rent, but she, he doesn't want him there and uh, she's all right with him just living there without rent, but, you know. Yeah, like, and she... In childhood friend, girl, I don't know if she's a childhood friend. Maybe she is. Yes, I um, think she is. Uh, that's, that's good, because I didn't notice that at all. Yeah, you, um, you didn't remember the flashback I was. Yeah. Um, she, like, sits out at night waiting for him to come back. Because he'll just go on, like, goblin slaying trips. And it could just be, like, he's he's just gone for, like, three days a week. Depending on, like, the kind of quest it is to kill yeah. the goblins. So it's, like, it's pretty interesting. Um, it's Clearly there's going to be conflict. Like, like, like the, the, the dad comes out and is just like, oh... You know, why, why are you waiting for him? He just pays rent here. He's like, I don't even, like, want you to get involved with him, you know? And, like, yeah. it's a big thing. It's not, like, That's why I want movie, my show about goblin killing. Fucking romance. With two characters I don't care about. Yeah. <laughs> like, Goblin Slayer, which was just kind of cool about Goblin Slayer. He's so apathetic to it right now. But if he does take in a, be taken in another direction of, like, caring about that kind of stuff, like, the series is instantly ruined. And it probably is. I could yeah. probably just go to the... The, the newest chapter of the manga and just look look at it and be like, hey, this is gay. Yeah, but uh, like I was saying, I think uh, a more resource management would be interesting because it would be like, a, Agreed. you know, like 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 I said, it would make more sense why he like does, doesn't get magic weapons because his reasoning is kind of dumb. It's like, if they kill me, they'll take my weapons. And it's like, but like, how likely is that? And like, how, many, how much more could you kill with it? You know? I do have to say that like, he already kills them very precisely and well just based on the first episode like mm. he just goes in there and wrecks everything it's like does he really need any more crazy weapons like it would be nice it would be don't get me wrong yeah but like he doesn't need it at all extra super better answer better than the one i even came up with is that he doesn't do it because he knows it'll make him soft and i know it's gonna like one day i'm gonna like not do the right thing and it's going to cost me my life. And he, he does, like, the way he does it now because he knows that, like, it makes sure he cares about everything. Every detail is accounted for. It, like, if he gets... He's playing the wrong armor, game. He's he, playing the wrong game of life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I think that's a good reason, yeah. I'll take that. It would be a much better reason because, like, it also taps into, like, that thing as a kid when you're, like, uh, with, like, shows and stuff. Like, if you do a thing constantly, you're, like, uh, get good at it. You just get good at it. Even if you don't, like, put effort into learning about the thing, you'll just get better because you're doing it. Yeah, and... I'm a, there's a, a guy on the Catherine Timth podcast who who apparently kill was the one who shot is Osama bin Laden uh, terrorist. Um, and I say apparently My because dad. like how can we really really confirm that you know if you have multiple people barging into a room uh, in in a country across the world and our shady our military is shady it's like how can I trust that this is the guy who killed him it's like uh, and like. Um, I just wanted to say this really quick because I really don't want to forget this is that um, the this this dude was talking about how he was like he's like a Navy SEAL and shit and like how at some point like 
like his normal like missions it's like he has a big adrenaline rush it's like a big deal and he's like you're preparing for it and stuff and like at some point he started feeling that the adrenaline was going down or that like he was worried that he might not get the adrenaline rush anymore and so like it wasn't like a thing of oh i want the adrenaline rush it's no oh what if i get sloppy because that's apparently a real thing and i think i thought that was really interesting and i think that like contextualizes you know your theory scorn like pretty well um like yeah. you're, you're the reasoning that you know goblin slayer may be like using normal weapons is because like you need to keep it like real you need to keep the rush there you need to you know it, it's it's playing the long game yeah yeah it's yeah yeah that's a much better reason than like just money or whatever because you are right that like he's doing it fine without i mean more for like a Stuff like a bare armor, so even if he like gets hit, but like even then, it's, like he he's plans not to get hit. Yeah, I, I feel like, feel like actually, all his stuff. It, it's like why have it expensive if you're just gonna be killing goblins? Because like his armor, like he puts like shit on it to make it not smell like metal and stuff. And like um, if you're gonna be doing that to metal constantly, and you're gonna be like slaying goblins constantly. And, like, you're going to make sure that you're going to stay alive, so you're going to do crazy shit. It's like I could see, like, his armor's already kind of damaged. Why would you want to do yeah, that I, to a more expensive thing? I'm, I think it's a, de- I think it's a decent reason, but I definitely agree that the reason you gave makes a, like, is a much more impactful one, I think. Yeah. Uh, and another thing is uh, that I, I'm interested to see if, like, if he's, like, he does actually change his armor. I, you know, yeah, like, he'll get breaks and he has to get new pieces. Because, like, he does that with weapons constantly. But like uh, his own like armor and stuff is like as for, uh, from right now is the same. I don't yeah. really like the design of his armor now, so I'd be okay with it changing. I would like it a lot mm-hmm. more if it was like meant to be parts work. I don't know if there's gonna be a reason for his armor, or if it's just that like what he had on hand at the time. Yeah, it's weird. I, I saw some of the uh, manga panels just because I like searched it up at some point when I was thinking of doing a uh, video for it, a uh, video of Goblin Slayer, which I didn't do and I don't want to do. Um, it was um. Uh, who cares? Uh, it just seems like... I don't know. He just In the manga, honestly, he kind of looks cooler. There's a lot more like striking scenes. Yeah, um, I've, some of the art scene is a lot better. He's actually yeah. kind of good looking. But in the anime, it's just like... Oh, uh, it does tell the fact that he's kind of like... He's got the shitty equipment, but like... And it doesn't look right. But like, it has utility purpose. You know, as we learned in like episode three. Um, um, I don't know. Episode... Episode four ends. Uh, he like uh, passes out for three days after getting hit by the like demon king or whatever. Uh, episode five starts. He's like woken up from his like a three day coma. Everyone fucking tells him he's been asleep for three days, and he's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, and he's just continuing to do his uh, you know, checking yeah. to see if the goblins came near the fences of uh, his uh place where he stays, that neighborhood. Uh, he, That's really uh, cool. This was, uh, Episode uh, five uh, is the one where uh, we focus on just two of the people. Oh, is that oh yeah, yeah, remember. that was five because yeah. uh, okay. first of all, six isn't out, I don't think. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's where we went to the big tangent of them, and that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we should talk about uh, Goblin Slayer stuff. I think I he was like, this is the one he goes talks to the blacksmith, and the blacksmith is like, yeah, okay, whatever. and then uh, he talks to. Uh, then the other the group finds him and they're like you've been asleep for three days and like yeah I know <laughs> and then uh well I don't know what happens then I'm, I'm pulling then, up the episode um um then like uh the he goes to the guild or whatever it is and he's like uh, any goblins and I think she's like no thing oh and, she, and then she was like but wait 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 hear me out hear me out and he's like keep it short keep it short and I, hey. And then she uh, invites him to, like, you know, it is a job that pays just to do uh, what is a confessional, where he's uh, an observer, where, like, yeah. a an adventurer committed a crime, and they're going to hear him out, and how they have a lie detector test is, like, so one of them is, like, a religious person or something, and has, like, uh, this little necklace thing, kind of looks like a cross, kind of, and she'll instantly know if he's lying, on, like, if he says something, and he's actually lying. So it's, like, that's pretty cool, and they just have him there to protect the, uh, you know, the the, the women who, who do are doing this, because they're not adventurers, they're not armed, 
And uh, that scene, I think, was kind of cool. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to just say generically cool, but what were you going to say? I was going to say, I think uh, it was implied that like the woman who had like uh, light detective powers because it was so fight, but like Goblin Slayer was there to like, extra protection. Yeah. I was confused by like the scene. He, he didn't actually, he didn't actually punch him, did he? No, no, that's the, that's the part I loved. Oh, All right, so what happened was um, this elf dude like had a vision. Like, when he was lying and he was getting in a tight position, he was thinking of, you know, stabbing these people and getting away. Uh, like They're not keeping a trap or anything, but I don't know why you would stab them. Uh, that's kind of weird. Either. But, um, like, so apparently that's a thing. But, like, he has this vision while he's, like, you know, putting his hand over his knife, his knife's hilt. And... He sees his motion going forward to like try to go after the the woman, and Goblin Slayer just instantly just comes at him and shuts him down, like disarms him with his right hand, Goblin Slayer's right hand, and uh, bashes in the face with his left hand, and it's just so satisfying to see that that was a vision and that Goblin Slayer would be a good bodyguard mm. when he actually like cares and like is. I'm- you know, carrying back. I was probably watching at two speeds, so I think I like missed I was a vision. I thought it ha- actually happened. I like Goblin Slayer just punched him and sat down really quickly afterwards. Yeah. So I had t- the image of him like jumping back into his seat, like uh, to try and intimidate him. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like trying, yeah. that's his way of intimidating people. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, he just does things quickly. But like he in the in between the time where his eyes are closed because he's been punched, he like jumps back, uh, he like motions to the girls to act like nothing happened. <laughs> I really love that thought. Um, yeah. yeah, I could see how you'd miss that in two times speed. Since I was watching it in the same speed, I could have easily missed it. But I was like super. Yeah, it, like, it was cool seeing him like punch the guy. Oh yeah, satisfying. Um, Apparently, he was like having like issues with low level adventurers or something, weren't they? They said something about it, that. There's not many low level adventurers around, and so like they do these confessionals. Basically, like what what the verdict was on this was it, obviously this d- dude was confirmed to have basically he's a scout. He goes into a place and checks it out first, uh, but he stole the treasure that was there, you know. And since he's a one dude and he's probably sly like that. And that goes against the rules and the agreement that he, you know, was of his job as a scout. So what they did is they banned him from the area, from the the guild, the the town, uh, and they uh, demoted him to a a porcelain rank, which is the lowest rank, Um, which is really they, they do that so they can at least still have a chance to stay within, you know, the uh, adventuring sort of business. Since there's not that many people around, that's an yeah. interesting lore bit. I'm not gonna lie, I did enjoy that. And like, yeah, it, Tom, the issue ahead. I have with that is like, if the goblins are literally killing and like kidnapping people, there'd be like a lot more, you know? Like they're in a country, it exists. Does it have a military, or is it literally just like no? They just let adventurers do it because like if goblins are like constantly attacking towns and shit, people are gonna like help. Like less has been done for more. Like, in, in our world, like, at one point in France, there's, like, a bunch of wolves atta- wolf attacks and the official army was called in to, like, stop it. There was, like, there was, like, apparently just one or two wolves and they, like, entire, like, the entire French army was mobilized. Well, not the entire French army, but, you know. But, like, uh, I'm sure like a, a big couple. brigade or something. Yeah. And they, like, Some put battalion. it down. And it was, like, and it's, like, this is, and this was when they had guns and saying, like, so, you're telling me this world can't just, like, mobilize a militia and it's, like, alright, they're in this cave, burn it fucking out. Yeah, it's like, how can the society be that distracted by something else? It's not like there's, like, a way bigger issue. Uh, like, you know, the Demon Lord, it's like, no one's taking action against the Demon Lord situation, honestly. Episode, like, it's not even guy, a big like, deal. In the first episode, the guy's like, yeah, I'm gonna go there, get some gold. He's, like, he's like excited about it, because he's like, I'm gonna be famous. They're like, So, this guy, the Demon Lord's gonna kill a bunch of people, isn't he? <laughs> These are human beings who care about lives, right? Mm-hmm. I don't get this. I, I, like, now that you mention I, it, like... The idea, I have no sense of the military at all in the series at all of, of Goblin like, Slayer. Okay. Like, they're no... It's like, how can the society be that free to, like, just let that happen? Like, it just seems that there's no, like, society, societal, like, inf- influences on some of these people. It's like, some of these newbie kids getting into the adventuring industry. 
because like episode five also like like we said is so it's trying to show the world is brutal because like there's like giant rats and then giant insects that eat the rats and it's like oh this is horrible but it's also like but then the first kid's like yeah i killed two goblins and it's like i could deal with this and like i know goblins here says that they were probably like little baby goblins it didn't matter or something yeah but like yeah. but still like couldn't this like how common is this like stuff like this this is like either either has to be not common enough or like too common too common so like to get the world the feel of like darkness it wants or like not common enough so that people can be stupid enough to like underestimate them so like, that's that's, it. that's really it to the episode is the 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 trial that um Gumslayer sits in on you know the uh the talking to the blacksmith and the uh side shit with the uh the guy trying to get his sword back from the sewers that's literally <laughs> everything to the episode and it ends with the trial basically that's it that's yeah. episode 5 i'm i'm fucking dead <laughs> 3 hours the recording right now for listeners try to keep this part in it, the recording is 2 hours and 57 minutes <laughs> like a pa- pa- there's pa- some like, no, that's it. Yeah, there's some okay, like, like all of that was our bullshit. Yeah, there was like a lot of bullshit. There was like at least twenty or thirty minutes of like technical, like oh, we're you know figuring stuff out, or oh, we just took a break or something. And uh, so that's just goes to context this for you, view, dear viewers. If you stayed with us the uh, this long, uh, what a gauntlet! Even after this will get trimmed down, I'm sure. You deserve like an actual medal. Like I actually like you. Fuck all the audience normally, but you you are actually a human being. Like I and hope this deserves- served you well. I hope this podcast served you well for whatever activity you were doing with it. Um like, I don't know. Not that it's kind just- of activity. It's no no November, you fucks. <laughs> yeah. Even you gotta stick to the rules of no that. November. Alright. Thank God. Holy crap. It was fun, but holy shit.